Hello everybody! Welcome back to Twofold, it's Twofold Tuesday! Welcome in everyone, how's it going? How's everyone doing? I hope, I hope everyone's had a, a good start to the week. Um, I'm, you may have been able to tell by the fact that I didn't change the stream title before I went live. I'm a little bit scattered today, but it's okay, because I have uh, this. Oh my goodness, if I can open it. Oh, uh, my, my nails have gotten so long now, I'm struggling to open cans. What? There it is. Ah. I have this! <laughs> that was a harder can open to... Can to do... Uh, opening can. <laughs> Thank you for making me chibi! Oh my goodness, chibi start. Here we go. Eight. Eight. I only have one can. 
I don't have eight of them. But yeah, that, that was like surprisingly difficult to open. I'm, I'm realizing now my nails have gotten longer to the point eight. where I'm, I'm not used to having long nails. Eight, yeah, all eight of them. I, I have 10 nails, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's a terrifying thing to think about. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna start with having a sip of my monster before I start greeting people. because it's been one of those days slash nights where I didn't sleep much last night, but I managed to get some sleep this morning. I managed to sleep this morning, but then it meant I was running late for everything. <laughs> so like, as I was like frantically trying to set up the stream, just like munching on a chocolate chip brioche roll, hoping I'd got everything sorted. Spoilers, she had not. <laughs> And yeah, I'm I'm a little behind on my schedule, but thankfully, because it's a game I've already played before, I didn't have to worry because I know it's going to work because it, I've already played it. It's the nicest thing about playing like series games for a while. I know every time I'm setting up for stream, I don't have to do much setting up <laughs> when it's a game I've already been playing because I've already done the setup part. Like that's that's the the hard part, like figuring out if the audio is going to go through the right channels, what the resolution's going to be, which monitor it's going to pop up on. Because <laughs> the amount of times I've loaded up a game and it's just loaded full screen onto my second monitor, which is to my side, like over this way. Like I just, uh, I would have to go like that to view it properly. It's like, it really is like a monitoring monitor. I don't really use my second monitor for like things I'm actively doing because of my weird desk layout. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the, the hard setup part is done so I know I can just roll along and be like, yeah, it's two fall time. Uh, that's also why my voice might sound a little bit gravelly for a little bit to begin with because I only woke up like an hour ago. <laughs> I've still got my like waking up voice, but that, that goes really quickly once I've been reading for a while. And this is a reading game. It's perfect. But yes, I am so excited to play more of this today. But before I waffle on too much, let me say hi to everybody. Rika, hello, congratulations on the first. Thank you for the, the secret head pad before the stream. It's so funny, I was setting everything up and then suddenly I got a head pad and I thought I'd like press the wrong button or something. But then I realized it was you. You were supporting me as I was setting up everything. <laughs> so thank you, Rika. And Akira, thank you for, as always, testing the, the sound alerts for me. It's always good to know that they're working. Uh, ba 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 ba, my brain is just falling out of my head. <laughs> Gambler, hello, lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. Howdy, howdy doody. How's it going? Uh, Suzume, hello, welcome, welcome. Oh, that, that must be so exciting, having, having like, your, your first time leaving Canada, going to go, like, visit your aunt and go to Ofkai? Ofkai? If you're going to Ofkai, just so you know, on a Saturday at 4pm, there's going to be a Studio Elan Verpro collaborative panel. And by collaborative panel, I mean it's a, it's a Studio Elan panel and Verpro is crashing it. <laughs> But yeah, if, if you're gonna be at Ofkai Expo this weekend in California, we will be there. The Burpro squad will be there. And I may also have some other cool surprises to share about Ofkai, but it's not confirmed yet, so I don't wanna say too much. But um, there may be a way to say hi to me outside of the panel. That's all I'm saying. It's not confirmed yet. I, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to. It, like, it won't be in person, obviously. I'm, I'm in the UK, but it could be as close to in person as you can get with a VTuber. <laughs> oh, it's also not one of those cool robot things. I, I, wish, I, I wish I could be one of those cool robot things. But at the same time, uh, I'm, I wouldn't want to like hire out one of those robots. Like, you know, the ones with like the screen and you can like manually roam around the convention. 
there were like options for VTubers to be able to like rent those or like run around on those. Uh, I would not trust myself with it. I don't want to be in control of a robot. I would run people over. I would probably smash it into a wall and then have to pay for it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for Off Guy. There's, there are some things cooking. There are some things to be announced. I think there may even be some things being announced before Off Guy as well. I'm, I'm being so vague with literally everything I'm saying. I don't know what I can say and what I can't say. But I can say the panel's happening and there's going to be some Studio Elan announcements and there's also going to be some collaborative drawing. We're going to do some art. So I'm really excited for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, oh, Kita, hello. Thank you for the eight as well. I'm, I'm really like behind on everything. Hi, Ace, hello as well. Welcome on in. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. Wait, yeah, Kitta, you're right. It, I guess if I'm talking about specifically fingernails and not thumbnails, then I do have eight. It's very true. But yeah, it's gone to the point now that when I'm using my phone, my nails are tapping on the screen, and I'm not used to that. As like a, a chronic habitual nail biter for like most of my life, it's been really hard to actually grow my nails out, but I am incredibly proud of how well I'm doing. Like, I'm still not quite there. I'm still at, like, the in-between point where my nails aren't as nice as they could be because of me biting them for so long. But they are long now. I can see the whites of my nails. And I love it. And I'm really excited for them to get to the point where I can start, like, painting them and having, like, really nicely done nails. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just here, like, with my hands doing, like, the, the little flick, like, and my nails, check out my nails. And they're, like, they're hideous at the moment. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll have to relearn how to open candles with nails. I I think I'm just too paranoid at the moment that I'm gonna break them. I don't want to like use my nails to open cans because I feel like I'm going to break a nail, even though they're really strong. My nails are surprisingly strong. But yeah, I'm, I'm proud of myself for that. And Divina, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in, welcome to Twofold Tuesday. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for Alfkai. And yes, there's gonna be there's gonna be new Burpro merch. Hold on, let me Uh is is it really a visual novel stream with Lurie if I'm not rambling on for half an hour beforehand? I need to find the the merch stuff for Verpro that's gonna be at Alfkai. I'm really, really excited for it. I think I think Mew posted it. Yes. Mew's posted a bunch of the the stuff that's going to be available at Ofkai. I'm excited. It's probably easier if I just Oh, I was going to say it's prob probably easier if I just link the post on Twitter, but then I forget that Twitter's doing the horrible thing now where you have to be logged in. <laughs> <laughs> to view tweets, which is like the main reason I never look at Instagram is because every time I try, it's like, log in with your Instagram uh, Facebook meta account. And I'm like, well, I simply will not then. Because <laughs> I'm a stubborn cat. But yeah, I'm really excited for, for Ofkai. Let me, let me post some images. Here we go. Well, first of all, I think everybody has seen by now, but if you haven't, if you're not on Twitter, uh, there's going to be new charms that are debuting at Ofkai. Uh, they will be available outside of Ofkai as well. They're not like a an Ofkai convention exclusive thing. If anyone's worried about missing out, uh, they're not exclusive. But look, look, look how cute they are. They're so cute. I love them. I love them so much. I. To begin with, we were going to go with all desserts, but then, like, the only dessert I could think of was, like, a gummy worms. <laughs> and it would have been really weird to have all these, like, lovely baked goods, and then I'm just there holding a gummy worm. But, uh, but then Sylvie was talking about how they kind of wanted takoyaki, because, like, well, it, look, look how well it suits them as well. Oh, I'm, I'm back to big again. I'm large again. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you for the chibi redeem. But yeah, Sophie was talking about wanting takoyaki, but not wanting to be like the only savory thing. And I was like, well, what if I have a dinosaur nugget? <laughs> so we, we have like the three sweet, the two savory. We, we, we've evened it out. Although it is kind of funny because I've, I've, they're, they're all like baked goods or sort of like cooked in that kind of way. Dinosaur nuggets you kind of just throw in the oven. I'm, <laughs> I have the least refined food here. But I feel like it suits me so well. I, I, and like the, the art is just so gorgeous too. I love it so much. It's so, so beautiful. And like when, when the sketches were being done, uh, we were like giving feedback and it was like, do you want this shape of dinosaur nugget or would you like it to be something else? A speak now or forever hold your peace. And I was like, well, you've got it perfect. You, you've nailed it. This, this dinosaur nugget, I actually have a, like a physical dinosaur nugget uh, cushion. <laughs> Well, I guess it's kind of a plushy. It's a cushion. It's just a cushion in the shape of a dinosaur nugget. And it's that shape of dinosaur nugget. So it worked out so perfectly. But I'm really excited for that. It, they're so cute. And they all come with like little like custom custom colors for the actual key charm bit as well. It's not just like a generic silver or gold one. It's actually we, we've all got different colored, like, little keychain bits. Hold on, let me see if I can show mine. Nobody will ever guess what color mine is. Oh, why is this image so big? Hold on. This image is huge. Let me make it big before I pop it up on the screen. <laughs> Chain. It's got a pink, a pink part to attach the the keychain to the the thing. Oh my goodness, Maru! Hello, welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness, welcome on in, welcome. I'm just um shilling the Verpro merch that's gonna be sold at Off Kai Expo this weekend. <laughs> Hi, welcome in. How's it going? How's it going? Oh, my voice cracked a bit there. <laughs> Welcome! What were you doing? What was your stream? Thank you so much for raiding me! Welcome on in! Welcome in, raiders! To anyone who's new here, hello! I'm Liri, I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK, and I love comfy games and puzzle games, and this game, this game is the comfy type at the moment. I, I think it's probably going to get emotional, but I don't think it's going to be in a, a super uncomfy way, or if it is, it's going to be in like a healing kind of way. It strikes me as that kind of game, but uh, at the moment I'm I'm just chilling much. I'm you you joined at a great time. Please look look at these adorable charms. Look at these charms. Look how cute they are. <laughs> I love them. I love them. Oh, how do I make the emotes rain when raiding? I'm I'm using the um the Twitch alerts. I I used to use stream elements, and then I switched away from that for loads of reasons. And so I decided to try like the actual integrated Twitch alert system and they have so many options like the Twitch alerts are genuinely amazing. You can still have like the overlay in the same way, but you can have it so there's like a little emoji explosion on the whole page when there's a raid. You can you can do it so that there's like gacha options like sometimes like 60% of the time it'll show this alert, but then 40% of the time it'll show a different one. It's there. It's so customizable. It's incredible. It took me a while to get used to because I had to like manually micromanage everything because I'm a control freak. <laughs> but it's really good. It's really good. But oh, thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. Oh, doing your late morning productivity stream. I hope you were super productive. I hope you got loads of stuff done. <laughs> but thank you so much for bringing the raid here. If if you have to go rest after being productive, if you gotta go have have some food or drink, have some lunch, late lunch, please don't feel like you have to stick around. But if you do want to, uh, I'm gonna be playing a 
an amazing Yuri visual novel game that is it has been an, a complete joy to play so far. I'm having so much fun with it. <laughs> but thank you. Yes, thank you for the luck. Oh, caught up with emails. Oh my goodness. I I bow to your strength. That's like the one thing I can never do. I always feel like I, I get caught up with my emails and then I return back and I've got 500 more. <laughs> I'm really bad at keeping up with emails. But yes, I hope you have a lovely nap. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. And welcome in raiders. I hope you decide to stick around if you want to, of course. We're gonna have a, a comfy time. Comfy chill time today. But uh, oh, today is Digital Art Tuesday for you. Ooh, I approve. I approve, I hope the art goes well. <laughs> but thank you for stopping in. Thank you for, for saying hi as well. But yes, these are the, the new charms that are going to be debuted at Ofkai Expo this weekend. They're so cute. And mine has a little pink... Uh, what? I don't know what to call the the actual, like, clippy bit. I'll just call it the clippy bit. Uh, the clippy bit on my keychain is pink. <laughs> and then Momo's was going to be pink as well, because we are both very pink. We're pink magical girls. But then we realized that the blue they offered was the same blue as her dress and a bow, and it matched so beautifully. So Momoka ended up having the blue one, and then Sylphie had red to match their eyes and accessories. Uh, Geist had like the, the tealy green to match eyes and clothes and stuff. And Mia had white because she is a, a pure innocent soul who's never done anything wrong. <laughs> Also, anyone who is a fan of Mia Sova, check this merch out. She is smiling. We we have non-frowny, non-pouty Mia Sova merch. <laughs> it's the power of uh, good food and good friends, I say. <laughs> but oh, Maya, hello. Oh, I'm glad too. I love the dinosaur nuggets so much. <laughs> it's so cute. They turned out so well. But uh, that's not the only merch that's going to be available there. There's also going to be... Uh, I think there's actually going to be some very limited amounts of the things that were in my anniversary bundle, like the standees and sticker books. I don't know how many are in stock. So that's going to be like a super limited, if there's anything available kind of thing. But they will be taken. And also in that news as well... Uh, the anniversary merch bundles are finally in the process of being shipped out. Yay! It's happening. People should be getting uh, shipping notices hopefully soon. Uh, I think it's it might take a little longer with some orders than others, depending on like area and off Kai happening and busyness. But I've I've already been informed that some people have been getting there their emails to say that it's being shipped out so that's really exciting it's so exciting for me <laughs> it makes me so happy i i love how the merch has turned out i can't wait for people to get it but yes that's not the only merch that's going to be available there's also going to be this beautiful a3 print done by mew um uh, uh, like the uh, he uh bad uh, words uh, Mew is a behind-the-scenes member of Verpro, who's also the one... I think Mew was in charge for the, the Verpro-chan design? Yeah, yeah, Mew did the, the VP-chan design, which is our, our lovely little mascot. She's lovely. I love VP-chan. <laughs> but yeah, there's this lovely print by Mew, and it's it's so cute. It's It's us going vacationing in California. <laughs> But yeah, if you're there as well, um, if you're curious and you want to be in on a little secret, if you go to the stand and ask about the, the super secret print, wink wink. <laughs> if you're there, you'll see. But yeah, it's so cute. I love how it turned out. I'm, I'm kind of like slouching looking at the camera. I'm getting ready to take photos of everybody and I'm I'm going to have just taken photos of cats on the street. It's the it's the Verpro. 
<laughs> the, the way we function. Uh, Momo is desperately trying to figure out where we're going with Geist. I'm just faffing around with the camera, not helping. Nia is looking into the distance, trying to figure out what's going on. And Sylphie is waving in the background. I, I really love the Sylphie wave in the background. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my, my contribution to this is I'm directionally challenged. I'm going to leave everyone else to the directions. I'm going to take photos of cats. But yeah, as well as this merch as well, as well, I'm saying as well a lot, there's also going to be merch of VP chan herself, our mascot. Look how cute this is. There's a plushie, there's a beautiful print. It's, it's so nice. It's so nice. And this is just like the Verpro side of things. There, there's also going to be so much Studio Elan merch. There's going to be, there's, I know there's, there's going to be at least a twofold print there. There's going to be twofold merch. So there's, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, bring, bring your credit cards. I mean, um, only if you can afford it, please spend responsibly. <laughs> I'm really, really excited for Ofkai. I'm looking forward to it so much. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm a little nervous for like beaming in from a remote location, but I think I'm, I'm really excited for it. And I feel like I've been hearing that so many people are going as well. It's so exciting. But yes, I, I just wanted to show that off before I started because I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, writing it out. Yes, make notes. Just be like, right, I need to go to the, the Elan booth and ask about everything. <laughs> Just, honestly, just go up there and just say, Liri sent me, show me everything. <laughs> I don't know if that will actually work. I uh, hope I can get some of the merch sent to me. Oh, don't worry. I'm I'm getting that organized. <laughs> it's really funny because I've been arranging things to get my merch sent to me. And as it's happening, I'm, I'm, I'm just messaging people like, oh, can you also add this? Oh, can you add this as well? Can I can I also get this to be sent to me? Can I can you just send me a, a massive box with everything ever? <laughs> so when that arrives, I'm going to have the the best show and tell session, because when that arrives, I'm going to be doing a hand cam stream. I'm going to be showing it all off. So <laughs> it might take me a while. Because I'm, I'm literally delaying everything by being like, okay, please, can you just send everything together? I'll wait longer to just have everything. <laughs> but I'm really, really excited for it. Oh, I think Josh will be too stunned by your cosplay. <gasps> You're going to be cosplaying? Oh, that's so exciting. I, I, I want to see. I can't wait to see. <laughs> if you go to the panel, I'll be able to see. But uh, I... I that's, that's exciting. Excited for it. Uh, on, on May 31st, let's all go to Off Kai Expo and ask for the Elan Burger. <laughs> the look on the staff's face will be awesome. <laughs> Hi, Teffy. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Oh, that would... Oh, what if... No, I'm, I'm being awful now. I'm. My brain is going in directions now of like, what if, what if we do... A tiny little prank just to be like hey Liri told me to uh, ask for the the monster special the, there's no there's no monster special don't do that I know <laughs> as soon as I was thinking about it I'm just like don't do that to ev everyone has been so stressed out figuring things out for this don't add to the stress but it, it would be funny but oh, I'm, I'm I'm excited for it though it's, it's gonna be good and I'm excited to play more of this as well. I'm. Last time we played, uh, everyone was extremely helpful with the polls and made it tie. So I rolled a die to see which route I would do first. And we're going Millie first. We're doing the writing club first. So I'm, I'm really excited to explore more of this. I want to know more. I want to know more about Millie. I want to know more about Haley because Haley's great. And I also want to know more about, oh, what's her name? The awful one. Heather. Heather. I feel like I should remember that easier. <laughs> and also uh, Darren as well. Was it Darren? 
I don't know why, my, my brain keeps saying Dennis for some reason. It's just thinking of every guy's name that's six letters and begins with a D. I think it's Darren. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to learn more. You were gonna say Caprice, but I said the awful one. Yeah, no, no, Caprice is a, a ray of sunshine. I'm, I am part of the the Caprice Defense Force. I'm like, if if anyone tries to talk about how annoying and awful Caprice is, I'm gonna karate chop them. <laughs> I love Caprice. But uh, no, but Caprice is gonna be when I do the art club route. I although I'm probably going to learn more about it this way anyway because they are roommates. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to explore more. Oh, I forgot as well. Hold on, where's my phone? Look. I forgot too. You know how last time I said I was going to write a story? Because I got so inspired by the creative writing thing. Uh, I, I started writing a story, but I've literally got like three paragraphs so far. I haven't gone very far in the story and I think it's gonna take some editing too because a lot of it was very like a uh, train of thought I'm just writing down what I'm thinking and you got the dinosaur nugget thank you for throwing a dinosaur nugget at me thank you thank you and um I was gonna say in memory of the merch the merch is not dead that's the wrong that's the wrong phrase. What am I trying to say? I guess in honor, in honor of the merch. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like there's a phrase I was trying to think of there. And I cannot think of it. It's fine, it's not a problem. But yeah, I actually started writing a story. But it's, it's literally just the first few, the first few paragraphs. So maybe I'll read that at some point. Maybe. Maybe tomorrow. Because I don't have set plans for tomorrow's stream. My plan for tomorrow is to finish off Oros, which is not going to take four hours. And then I'm going to wing it. I'm going to chat and, I don't know, talk about random stuff. <laughs> it's a very well thought out stream for tomorrow. But uh, in celebration, celebration works. In lieu, I, although in lieu it's like, makes me think of like a replacement sort of I guess maybe like to commemorate maybe commemoration I'm not sure I've, I've all the words I'm thinking of feel very like when someone's died it's not that's not what I'm going for <laughs> also Grace now hello welcome welcome how's it going Welcome on in. Uh, you've not missed anything. Oh no, you've missed me talking about Off Kai Expo merch. But I haven't continued the game yet. Oh, and Ultima of Spade, thank you for the follow! Welcome, welcome! Oh, and happy birthday for tomorrow! Oh, if, if you pop by tomorrow, let me let me know and I'll I'll play you an automaton happy birthday if you like. <laughs> but thank you for following! Happy early birthday! Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play more of this though. I'm, I'm, I feel so invested in helping Millie out now. I feel so bad for her. It feels so devastating that she clearly cares so much about this club and actually making it a proper club and nobody else seems to care. Except maybe Darren now that he's joined as well. He, he does seem very passionate about writing. Oh, thank you for the hydrate! Thank you for the hydrate too, Rika. Let me have a sippy. Can I have two? Oh, actually, no. You know what I did? You know what I remembered again today? The first thing I did when I woke up because I was half asleep. I got my tea. So I have warm tea. So I really should have been drinking this sooner to help my throat but I'm silly and I forgot I made it even though I made it like an hour and a quarter ago <laughs> yeah oh you were worried being late for a sec but then remembered intros take a while oh yeah especially when I'm playing like a game like this where there's so much to talk about 
I do, I do tend to kind of ramble on a little bit at the start. It's okay. <laughs> but it means you're not late. I love the thought of just being like, oh no, liri has been live for half an hour. I'm going to have missed so much. <gasps> Never mind, she hasn't clicked load yet. <laughs> But uh, I've got to say, I love how when I first started the game, it was just the cactus. And now that I've played a bit more, now that we're past the prologue, Olive has appeared. They are here. And I really, I love this paper cutout style. I love it so much. It makes me want to make like a little diorama kind of thing. I'm terrible at art though, so it wouldn't go very well. But yeah, I'm really excited to see how this is going to go. Let's see what shenanigans unfurl in the in the writing club. And I'm also really curious too to know what Olive is going to Oh look at the little the little blink because we're on the because we're on the Millie path. This little Millie silhouette there. I love that. Yeah, and then this is this is just Olive because it was before I chose a route and now it's oh, I love that. And so I bet with, with Caprices as well, it's gonna be a mouse over and then it's blue instead of red. I love color-coded things. But yeah, all of the, the little details in this are I'm I'm very easily pleased by very small details. So this is the kind of stuff I notice and I'm like, oh look at that, I love that. It's so good. But yeah, it's so nice, yeah, seeing Caprice from different angles in both First Note and this, and also like when we're more from like Millie's perspective versus when we're gonna be closer to Caprice's perspective on the art club side. It's so good. He... Yeah, I love how the proper choice between the art and writing club is called twofold. It's, it's, I'm, I'm a really big fan of games where, where it doesn't feel like you're, there's a right and wrong thing to choose. I like when it's just like they are just different options and they're equally as important. <laughs> like sometimes I do like when, when it's a bit more linear and it's just like bad end or continue, bad end or continue. But it, it depends on like the the vibe of the game like some games that really would not work for <laughs> and I like this one because it's exploring the same thing from different sides to get the full picture to get the the full circle oh like the, the same name yeah I love that this this like chapter is called twofold it's so good I also just realized this one's called nines a crowd as well because it's just everybody in one room <laughs> But yeah, I'm really excited to continue with Millie. It's gonna be good. Uh, would I say it makes a perfect circle? Uh, well, I think a perfect circle is very hard to make. I think we're gonna have a great. Uh... What's a nine-sided? What, what's a nine-sided shape called? Nonagon. A nonagon? I think it, I think it's a nonagon. Yeah, because I I was thinking in my mind I was like a hexagon, septagon, octa no, is, yeah, septagon, octagon, nonagon. Yeah, I I, I I think that's right. <laughs> I don't know what shapes are called. I just know what they look like. But anyway, I'm excited to continue. Let's go! And I was only chatting for half an hour. New record. I think I might actually close the menu this time. I, I kind of just left it open the whole time before and then proceeded to not use it. <laughs> so let's close it. Let's have a bit more text box space. But yeah, so I apologize if my voice is a little bit rough to begin with. Uh, it should even out soon enough, especially now that I'm drinking my tea as well. <laughs> But it's my my just woke up morning voice, and even though it's very much not the morning. Ah. 
Glad I remembered my tea at least. I didn't even remember my tea. I like subconsciously did it without even realizing. And then I was like, oh yeah, I made my tea for Twofold Tuesday. Oh, Gambler, thank you for lurking. I hope your lectures go well. I hope you learn lots. I hope you have a good, a good day. Thank you for stopping in. Ugh, let me... Let me posture, posture fix myself. There we go. Okay. The trees are a nice color this time of year. Fall's always been my favorite season as far as I can remember. It's not as hot as summer and spring's weather changes wildly in a single day. Making the most of the few warm days left of the year, I pass my morning raking uh, I, I pass my morning raking up the leaves which have piled up on the paths outside the apartment building. No one else in the complex seems interested in this kind of busy work, but I've come to enjoy little chores like this, giving me time to quietly work away in solitude. I all but jump out of my skin as a deafening wolf whistle rings out from behind me, my sense of peace abruptly ruined. Looking behind me as I clutch my rake out of reflex, Tanya hangs out the door of a small parked car, grinning ear to ear. Oh, she would. Of course she would. A scarlet-faced Millie desperately attempts to tug her friend back in from the driver's seat. Oh, I'm just imagining Tanya just wolf whistling out the car window and then just going, Oi, sexy, and then just driving off. <laughs> Art. Oh, you finished your art. Oh, good job. What were you drawing, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> I hope it went well. Good to see you hard at work, Olive. Yeah. Tanya, please. <laughs> they sure are a pair. It surprises me how someone as proper as Millie befriended someone so everything as Tanya. I don't know this woman, I swear. Come on, I'm just having a bit of fun. I see you two are full of energy this morning. Meanwhile, you're doing your best impression of a responsible adult. They sound like they're dead inside. That's also how I would be raking up leaves. <laughs> just an impression, though. I want to say living alone is a hassle due to chores like this piling up, but honestly... I appreciate the mundaneness of it. Yeah, good good way of being grounded, staying staying down to earth. You don't have a roommate around to help? I'll lend you one of mine. Here's a caprice. <laughs> nah, mom pops over now and again, but it's mostly just me, myself, and I. Both of them look a little surprised as I shake my head. I hadn't thought my situation that unusual, but maybe I just got used to it. The car yours, Millie? Yep, my pride and joy. I was helping my dad restore it since before I could even drive. Gets quite a workout, too, fearing your roommates around. I'm telling you, you should make the bums get their own licenses. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem, really. Besides, Caprice started taking the trolley. Ah. Yeah, that... Mm. Do I have to? I, I, there, there's clearly something wrong here. I'm, am I going to force them to become friends again? <laughs> what is going on between them? Uh, <laughs> Olive's drank 10 cups of coffee already, it sounds like. And it's, it's still not working. Mm, it's. Uh. I was about to make like a really funny joke about like, oh, would you really trust Caprice with a, with a full like heavy vehicle like a car but now i just feel sad <laughs> now now i'm just like oh tanya gives her a questioning smile likely to do with the thing between her and caprice they must have a proper beef with each other for it to even affect the logistics of getting around you have a nice place the graffiti adds to the aesthetic yeah <laughs> I mean it, compared to some of the places students live. 
She gives a small glance over to Tanya for just a moment, who responds with a dismissive shrug. I see. I'm learning so much about Tanya right now. I love this. How are the neighbors? The old ones had a dog that loved waking up the complex with this barking every night. They moved out in the last couple months, though, thankfully. Couldn't tell you anything about the new ones. While we may keep to ourselves, that doesn't mean they don't make their presence known in other ways. The ones above me like loud music with lots of bass. I see. Great. One of the mailboxes is constantly full. Soon as I begin to wonder if the owner of that apartment's passed away, the mail mysteriously gets collected overnight. Then the, the, the cycle starts all over again. I wonder what they think of me. We all live our lives without talking to each other at all, despite living just inches apart. So, are we doing this thing? Should be about time we headed off. Sure, just let me put this away. Thanks again for giving me a lift. Not at all. It's the least I can do after taking your free time for something like this. A writing club outing! Where are we going? What are we doing? As we roll to a stop and Millie cuts the engine, the occasional honking of impatient cars still navigating the busy streets punctuates the low rumble of the crowds. I'm the first out of the little car, stretching myself out as much as I can, doing my best to shake out the ache of being crammed in that tiny box during rush hour. Millie and Tanya, on the other hand, are entirely unfazed, stepping out with little dramatics. I've never felt embarrassed about stepping out of a car before, but I guess there's a first time for everything. Man, downtown's packed today. All the outlets are probably having clearances before bringing out the winter clothes. That's my favorite. That's my favorite time to go clothes shopping. Like, the, the moment where they're getting rid of all of the spring-summer stuff getting ready to bring in like the the winter merchandise i love that because it means all of the the cooler clothes go on sale and then because i don't feel the cold i just buy cheap clothes because i can just get all of like the the spring summer stuff and because i don't feel the cold i, I don't need to bundle up so i get i get them cheaper <laughs> you think heather and darren are stuck in traffic it was pretty blocked up on the way in Where's this signing at, anyway? <gasps> it's, a, it's a book signing? Bookstore is a bit of a hike up the road from here, but this is probably the closest parking spot we're going to get. The forecast called for a chance of rain today. I hope they get here soon. I can't say I've ever been to a book signing. It's rare I even go to a bookstore these days, unless you want to count the one on campus. I, I've been to a couple of book signings, but it's never been for like a really high profile, big name author. But I, I have a few signed books. It's, it's been mostly like, lo fairly local-ish talent. Like sometimes I'll, it, it's been a while now since I did, but I used to walk past, uh, the, the main bookstore chain in the UK is called Waterstones. And every time I walk past a Waterstones, I always have to step in and have a look because it's there's just books everywhere and it's like they're always really inviting. They're really dark inside, but it doesn't feel claustrophobic. It's not like dark in a in a dingy kind of way. It's dark in like a comforting warm hug kind of way. And I really love Waterstones. And so every now and then, like the local Waterstones, they'll be like, uh, we're having this author in on this day to sign this book. And so I'll check out the book, and if it's something that I, I... I haven't done this for a while now, I'm saying it like it's an active thing I do right now. <laughs> but it used to be like, if it was a book that I was interested in, I would buy the book, and I'd read it before the signing happened, and then I'd go to the signing and be like, oh, I love this book. <laughs> but I actually found so many great like young adult books in that way. It was really nice. I, I, I kind of miss those days. I miss just like walking into a bookshop and then having the time to read the whole book in one day. <laughs> ah, to, I had to be a teenager again. But yeah, I, I discovered some really great authors that way. It was really nice. 
But yeah, I've got quite a few, quite a few signed books. I should have a look through at some point. Yeah, oh, going into libraries and not buying anything, thinking, uh, nah, I have too much to read already and walking out. Ah, oh, yeah, I, I understand that feeling too. I don't remember the last time I actively walked into a bookshop and bought a book. I usually just browse. <laughs> Because a lot of the time what I would do as well is I would go into a bookshop, I'd make a list of the books that seemed interesting, and then I'd see if the library had them so I could get them for free. <laughs> so I could read them from the library. But uh, we, we had a really nice library. I, I say had, it still exists. The library is still there, I just haven't been in a while. <laughs> but yeah, our library was lovely. Fond memories of going in there and alphabetizing the books myself because I was annoyed <laughs> but yeah I, I, I miss having time to read a lot I I really do love reading I love books <laughs> uh, I reminded you to pack your please be happy books I'm glad I reminded you <laughs> yeah can't say I've ever been to a book signing it's rare I even go to a bookstore these days unless you want to count the one on campus I can see the appeal insofar as being able to meet an important person face to face. Same goes for sports autographs, even if I've never been into that either. It also feels like the kind of thing a writing club is supposed to do. As new to the club as I might be, I can't shake the feeling that there's a difference between what a writing club should do and what our club members might want to do. Our attention is distracted from the people hugging their coats by the sharp pinging coming from Millie. Tanya and I wait in silence as she pulls the phone from her pocket and reads the incoming message. Zarok, hello! Thank you for throwing a die at me. Thank you for throwing a d20 at me. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Uh, good ev evening. Good evening, I think. Doesn't matter how many times I'm told, I'm terrible with time zones. <laughs> but uh, welcome, thank you for throwing things. Also, I would bet anything that this is Heather cancelling. I've got a feeling that Heather and Darren might both cancel here. I think Heather will cancel because she doesn't give a crap. I think Darren might cancel for anxiety of being out with lots of people at a busy book signing. We'll see. We will see. Oh, almost midnight. Yes, yeah, so it is evening then. Happy time zone. I'm. I thought it was like around that time. I. I'm always like wondering when I should be saying morning instead. <laughs> but no, I think it's evening before you go to sleep. But uh, thank you for popping in though. Thank you for stopping in. Oh, thank you for the posture check too. Let me have. Ugh. Big stretch. Oh, hold on. Let me sit up properly. There we go. Have a big stretch. And I will have a sip of my drink as well. But yes, I hope you sleep well. Thank you so much for stopping in. It's always nice to see you. Thank you for the, the drive-by care package. <laughs> right, is it going to be Heather or Darren? Or both? It's Darren. Yeah, I I feel like Darren's not going to be able to deal with, like, crowds and busy. Cr the, the crowds and the busy of this. <laughs> so, where is he? Looks like he's not coming. Huh. Seemed like such an eager beaver, too. Did he say why? No. Millie shakes her head. I think it's anxiety. I know, because I have been in that position before. <laughs> Why is everyone relatable? Why is everyone relatable? Stop it. <laughs> oh, you're waiting for your bedding to dry. Oh, I, I hope it's dried now. Or close to dried. Hopefully you can go to bed soon. <laughs> but I'm glad you got the chance to stop in. Millie shakes her head. I'll just be a minute. I'm going to give Heather a call. I think Heather's just gonna be like, oh, that was today, oh, sorry. I've got plans to um, wash my hair. 
Tanya and I exchange a brief glance as Millie steps away, tapping on her phone before bringing it to her ear. The two of us watch and wait, Millie fiddling with her braid as she talks. She looks surprisingly pensive despite her efforts to hide it. Oh, it's done, you already remade your bed. Oh, fabulous. I'm glad it's dried in time then. Oh, I hope you have a, a lovely night's sleep. It's always nice when you're going to bed with like fresh sheets as well, freshly washed. So I hope you rest well, thank you for stopping in. After what feels like minutes, though was likely only seconds, she gives a couple of quick nods before tapping the phone to hang up. With that, she shoves her phone back into her bag with a sigh before returning to us. Well? She's not coming either. Yeah. I saw that. Saw that coming. Tanya and I let out a long sigh. After all that build-up, the whole thing's... this whole thing's a bust. Should we head out on our own, then? Millie smiles a sad smile. This definitely isn't the first time this has happened. Ugh. Maybe another time. I won't drag Aww. you two in there. It's not much of a club outing if half the club isn't here. I feel so bad for her. No. Oh, Millie. Millie. I debate pushing back, if for no other reason than to soothe my guilt, but Tanya perks up before I get the chance, swiping away at her phone. <coughs> Tanya flashes her screen at the two of us triumphantly, offering us salvation through a silent declaration. Twenty-four seven happy hour, I see. I see. Are we heading to the usual spot? Not quite what I was imagining. It's not even ten. <laughs> oh goodness, of course. I'm definitely getting a picture of who Tanya is right now. I'm I'm really getting to know Tanya through this. Oh, I had a big busy day. Oh, I'm glad you were able to unwind after a busy day. Super fresh night's sleep. It sounds perfect. <laughs> I hope you rest well. <laughs> Adorable. Should have. Sure, why not? Oh, Millie. Oh, she's given up. She's fully given up. <laughs> but it's five o'clock somewhere. You're so right. I'll just start drinking at 10 a.m. my time and be like, well, it's the evening in Japan, so... <laughs> can only stare in stunned silence at Millie's response. She's quick to notice, giving me a sheepish laugh. I mean, I wasn't super optimistic about today anyway, if I'm being honest. No point in getting too worked up about it. This sounds as good a backup plan as any. No, she's just given up. Oh, it feels bad. Oh, oh, I feel so bad for her. Oh, good night. Rest well. Millie turns to her car, eager to get going and break eye contact. Needing no further prompting, Tanya practically skips over, crawling over the passenger seat into the back. Should I drop you back off at your apartment, or will you be joining us? No pressure. No pressure, she says, waiting patiently by her door, smiling wide. Do it, Olive. Do it. Do it. Go to, go to happy hour. Yes. With a sigh, I start making my way towards the passenger side door. <laughs> drink after dark. That's my kind of drink. The warm hum of people chattering and glasses clinking fills the air, each of us sitting on our stools before the counter. Oh, I love this art. Oh, I love this. Look at this. Ah. I also love how they all have different drinks. I feel a little like a fish out of water here, but seeing Millie and Tanya casually chatting between themselves helps things feel a bit more comfortable. In hand, a cheap beer, one largely inoffensive as far as taste goes. The sheer variety of alcohol to try is a bit intimidating, so I decided to stick with what I know. 
Tanya's grabbed a simple beer as well, while Millie sips on some bright blue concoction. <laughs> I'm, I'm also a, a bright blue concoction kind of cocktail drinker. It looks intense. It's not. I, I just drink it for the flavor. <laughs> I'd hope so, with how fast she's managed to empty her glass so far. Uh oh. Um. Mm. So you two are regulars. <laughs> they look so awkward. <laughs> this is this is basically like the so you come here often line. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm worried about Millie. Please, please drink water. Please, please have water. Please. Regulars makes it sound like we come here all the time. <laughs> Tanya's awkward face doesn't go unnoticed. I think this is the second bar I've ever been to, but it seems like a comfortable place. Millie has it so rough. I know, I'm just... Speaking from experience, uh, alcohol is not the way to deal with that. It's very much not the way to deal with that. It makes things worse. <laughs> Remember the party at the end of First Snow? Oh, you're right, yeah. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, Millie. I'm really worried about her. I'm, 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 I'm gonna just be sat here handing her glasses of water. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Beneath old photos of the town on the wood-trimmed walls, the patrons all look clean-cut and on the younger side. Maybe that's the appeal for Millie and Tanya. They fit the scene well. In the end, it's just a bunch of people relaxing, which is how it should be. The prices aren't bad either. Or I don't think they are. I don't have much of a frame of reference. I'm glad Millie's move uh, meh, meh, meh. I'm glad Millie's mood has improved, but I can't help stress at least a little about our current situation. Given why I joined the club in the first place, this isn't a stellar second impression. So uh I start without really thinking, drawing Millie and Tanya's eyes to me. Uh, you didn't seem that surprised about the attendance today. That's about as tame as I could have worded that. Millie's face flattens before I get the opportunity to pat myself on the back, though. <laughs> oh, Millie. Millie, hold on, hold on. I have to do this. I have to do this for myself. She looks so sad. I, I love how you just commented on how she was making like smiley face towards Olive and now she just... I, I want to hug her. I really want to give her a hug. Let me give her more. I'm... <laughs> she looks so sad. Oh. Oh, she looks so sad. This may surprise you, but Heather isn't consistent. Yeah, kind of, kind of picked up on that already. <laughs> you don't say. Tanya punctuates that with a snort. And well, I, I know you're friends, so please don't take this the wrong way. But Darren's a new recruit. I don't have much of a read on him yet. Yeah, that's fair. And also, he has anxiety. <laughs> Oh, I just the way he was just like awkwardly waiting outside the door before the first like introduction scene. I I really relate with that. I'm I'm I would also be in the same position. I w I would have just been waiting out there hoping that somebody would notice me. <laughs> I think you're really overestimating how close we are. Oh, really? When you walked in together, I just assumed you invited a tag along. Nope. We talked a bit and shared a few classes in high school, but that's as far as it ever went, really. Just a really weird coincidence. That being said, it does feel weird to have Darren miss something like this already, when he was supposedly staking out the club before I even was. The three of us sit on that for a minute, none of us quite sure where to take the conversation from there. 
Ugh, those two are a pain in the ass. I see Tanya is going for that approach. I see. Yeah, <laughs> Millie really makes you feel like I want to help you, but I don't know how. That's exactly it. It's just like, I, I can't really do anything here, but I want to give you a hug and tell you it'll be okay anyway. <laughs> Tanya? Okay, are we, are we getting the gossip now? Is it gossip time? I, I feel like if anyone's gonna gossip here, it's gonna be Tanya. Well, it's not like I'm innocent either. Go on. She wants the goss. <laughs> she's she's just here like, go on, yes, spill the tea. I'm just here because I need the help to pass my English course. I don't have a creative bone in my body. Huh? Is that all it is? <laughs> you sound disappointed. Yeah, she she wanted something juicy there. She she was like, oh, let let me know about your sordid intentions. <laughs> As opposed to Millie, who just looks disappointed. I thought it was gonna be something saucier. Yeah. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. There's not a <laughs> saucy bone in my body either. I'm sorry, I can't get over the phrase saucy bone. <laughs> it's just making me think of ribs. It's just making me think of food. Oh, well, for what it's worth, I appreciate you coming out today anyway. Millie smiles, but I don't need my glasses to see how strained it is. Tanya must pick up on it too, signaling down the barkeep to refill her friend's drink. Oh no. Oh dear. I'd appreciate you not trying to get her driver drunk before noon. Tanya doesn't bother to offer me anything past a roll of her eyes and a smirk. Please. Please do not tell me you're planning on driving after this. Millie looks down on her mostly empty glass, her smile softening to one decidedly more genuine. Sure. What harm could one more round do? I'm taking her keys. I'm gonna take them. I'm, I'm gonna take them. I'm... No. <laughs> oh, gossip can be spicy, saucy, or mild. Is gossip just a sauce? Oh my goodness, we're... We're, we're understanding the nature of gossip now. It makes sense. What are the kind of sources are there? My brain's going empty. I, I don't have sauce on things. I'm a <laughs> I'm a I'm a, a a plain food heathen. I I don't really have many sources with food. A new round of drinks arrives, and Tanya orders the table some bar food to soak up the alcohol I'm so worried about, she teases. As Millie and Tanya laugh together, chatting about some movie I've never heard of or a teacher they have together, something feels a bit off. When the conversation lulls, I catch a, uh, I catch a glance of Millie looking down at her drink, brow furrowed and lips pursed. The moment Tanya pipes up again, it disappears, but never quite completely. I try to shake the feeling. I don't know Millie that well to analyze her behavior and don't even know what I'd say if I could. For whatever it's worth, Tanya's able to keep pulling back Millie from whatever depths of thoughtfulness she keeps sinking into, even if she needs alcohol to do it. Very healthy. Very healthy situation we got going on here. Time passes quickly, and before I know it, it's been over an hour since we got here. I leave some cash for my order and a tip before excusing myself. Millie has been handling herself well, looking alert and sober since switching to soda a bit earlier. Oh, thank you. Thank goodness. I was worried. I still decline when she offers me a ride back, though. I'm... Sorry, I'm, I'm the disappointed parent here. I'm... Millie, you shouldn't be doing that. Stepping into the frigid air and daylight, I have to squint to see you. The overcast sky from this morning has been replaced with a typical sunny afternoon. With nothing more to do, I head back to my apartment. Hopefully I'll still be able to do something productive today. 
What, you don't think that was productive? I thought that was quite productive. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, we got a week later now. We got a time skip. Also, Tay the Reaper. Hello, welcome. Is it Tay? Is it Tai? Please let me know if I'm mispronouncing. But thank you for following. Welcome in. Welcome aboard me turning into a, uh, a disappointed parent. <laughs> oh, it's... Oh, I'm... In I'm worried. I'm, I'm very worried about Millie. I'm very worried. Uh, Millie's handwriting re reads more like an alien language as I squint and concentrate to make out her sentences. What might have started as cursive has developed into a scrawl, as if the paper were desperately trying to keep up with her train of thought. What's all this? Editor's notes. Do you have them in English? <laughs> Oh, it's Olive's story! It's Olive's story! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, I'm excited. Uh, ignore that typo. What if I don't? Go. Go where? Go here. <laughs> it's okay, I've... Have you ever had a moment where you're like trying to type something and you're in the wrong chat box and you type it? Wait, <laughs> that's exactly what happened, isn't it? You're trying to type Google into a different window. I oh my goodness, I love that I just started talking about random anecdote and it was the exact thing that happened. Oh, that happens to me all the time though. I will think I'm typing in one thing and then I'll like type out a whole thing and press enter and realize I've accidentally sent a DM to my brother on Discord or something. <laughs> I'm, or or I'll be like I'll be in a game and I'll be trying to move. It'll be like a WASD game, and I'll be trying to go forward and I'm not moving. And I'm like, why am I not moving? And then I look over at my other monitor and I've just typed loads of W's in a chat. <laughs> it happens all the time. I always have to double check things, but very understandable. <laughs> With my story writing complete, we well Millie decided it best to go over things in more detail after the club. The outdoor seating was also her idea, even if the small tables make trying to sift through this mess even more of a hassle. <gasps> Tomato night! Hello, thank you for the follow! Welcome, welcome! Oh, it took me a second to pass that. My brain was going, uh, Tom, Tom, Tom talk. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, tomato. Or I guess depending where you're from, tomato night. It sounds weird when I say it. Sounds weird when I say to to tomato. Tomato, it's tomato. Sorry. Potato, potato. You know. <laughs> but uh, welcome in. Thank you for the follow. I hope you enjoy your time here. The one-on-one -on -one counseling. Yes. Oh, I I love it. It's this this is probably what Olive was hoping for with with the writing club. To be honest, because I don't think they're gonna get much help elsewhere. But if they're just talking to Millie one on one, this is the perfect way to to get that that like free tutoring. <laughs> the outdoor seating was also her idea, even if the small tables make trying to sift through this mess even more of a hassle. Given how extensive her notes are, any optimism I may have had has been quickly dashed. I know you can't expect perfection immediately, but even if the professor was half as thorough as Millie, it'd still pretty handily be a failing mark. Slouching into my uneven seat, I rock it back and forth as I mull my situation over. Our cups of coffee steam away on the table between us, Millie's bright face watching my own. It's been a week since the failed outing, and with a couple of club meetings happening since oh, with a couple of club meetings happening since then, if she's annoyed or sad about what happened, she hasn't shown it. Even now, she smiles widely while waiting for a response to her writing critique. That's only made the charade of the writing club meetings all the weirder. It's just another week of everyone silently ignoring the elephant in the room. That nobody actually cares about any of this. Except Millie. <laughs> and maybe Darren. 
I take up my cup of coffee and try to think over my writing. That's the look of concentration I wanted to see. I knew you'd get into this. What's on your mind? <laughs> What's on your mind? I'm thinking I've done badly. Nothing you want to hear. Try me. That these glasses are giving me a headache. <laughs> oh, the little pout. <laughs> I love the little pout. I want to poke her cheek. Millie pouts as I grumble to myself, but it soon gives way to a small giggle. I promise you contacts are worse, but you do what you gotta do to maintain appearances. Now, how about we get back on track? <gasps> Millie wears glasses? I want to see Millie with glasses on. <gasps> oh. oh, see, I, I, never, I never tried contacts because I just... My, my vision isn't so bad that I need glasses all of the time, like when I'm indoors and things are close. Because uh, I'm nearsighted, so it's only when things are in the distance that I actually need my glasses on. So it's only like when I go out, really. And I just really like my glasses, so I, I never even tried contacts. But also, like, I feel like contacts are harder to look after. What with, like, the the contact solution and having to keep them clean and stuff. Glasses are literally just, you, you kind of just give them a, a rub with a random cloth and they're clean again. <laughs> At least mine are. I look after them quite well. Recognizing that my attempts at avoiding this any further have been thoroughly squashed, I return to Millie's notes with a sigh. Almost everything here is covered in corrections and fixes. Actually... I think you've written more than I did in the first place. <laughs> Has she rewritten the whole thing? Ah, oh, same here. Oh, you also just can't handle things in your eyes, even if they're supposed to be. Ah, uh, see, that, that part's not a problem for me. Like, I would be able to wear contacts. I'm not squeamish, like, getting close to my eyes, putting contacts in. And I've worn a lot of contacts before, but it's always been non-prescription ones that like circle lenses for cosplay <laughs> like i'll wear contacts that i don't need but i won't wear the ones that i do need because glasses are just easier and i'm i i always like the easy path plus i just really like how my glasses look too i the, these glasses are so nice because uh, for anyone who doesn't know as well uh, the glasses i'm wearing right now with my model these are my real life glasses too this is also my real life hair, too. It's this is this is just me. <laughs> this is just me in real life. It's all good. Uh, you've wanted to try contacts, but apparently it's really difficult to get contacts when you have astigmatism as strong as yours. Oh, that's slightly my problem too. Uh my my eyes, like I can see pretty well through my left eye. My left eye is pretty decent. It's a little bit of a struggle, which is why I have the glasses now, and that helps with that. But I can see really well with my left eye. If I try and look through my right eye, um, my astigmatism is so bad, I can't... I can make out shapes. I can make out blurred shapes. I can't read. But that's something that doesn't even change when I have glasses on as well. Like, I have my glasses on, if I cover my left eye... I still can't see. It's just a little bit less uh, misshapen than <laughs> without the glasses. Like the glasses are just for my left eye. I've I've got one fully functioning eye, and that's uh, like I can I can just close my right eye and I don't need it. <laughs> it's why I always have my hair like parted this way too. Because if you look, it's my hair covers my right eye. And that's because that's the eye I can't see out of anyway. <laughs> it was great when I was a teenager. When I when I was a teenager and I was going through my emo, it's not a phase. This is who I really am. I had like the full emo fringe fully covering my right eye. And my vision just didn't change because I couldn't see properly through that eye anyway. <laughs> and my left eye did all the work I needed. It does mean my depth perception is really bad. But uh, because I can still make out, like, shapes and blurry, like, outlines, I can still figure out the depth a bit better than if I just had no sight in my right eye. 
but yeah, little leery fact. Um, my right eye is rubbish. <laughs> but yeah, my glasses are, are purely like for my left eye, so that I can so that I can see properly with my left eye, because that's that's the one that does all the work. <laughs> I appreciate the effort you're putting in, but man, it's hard to stay optimistic about this. What chance do you think I have here, honestly? No, I think they have a chance. Look, I don't think Millie would make this many notes if she didn't think they had a chance. Like, if Millie thought that Olive was completely hopeless, she would not have made that many notes. I don't think she would have. She, she would be a lot more, like, gentle and just make, like, little notes. The fact that she's making so many, I think, means that she thinks Olive has potential. <laughs> it's a really cool detail, thank you. Yeah, it's... It's just something that's, like, kind of always stuck with me. Like, I, I always have my hair parted on my left. Because my right eye is the one that just doesn't work properly. Ah, uh, need to make a, a Leary Law quiz at some point and make chat take it. <gasps> that could be so fun. Oh my goodness, that could be really fun. Because I could do like some, some like freebies, some really easy questions like what is the name of my cat and stuff like that. But oh, that, that'd be a really good way to like, for like new people to get to know me as well, to, to hear the answers and be like, oh, I didn't know that about her. That's interesting. That's that's a great idea. Thank you. Let me let me make a, a mental note of that. No, let me make a physical note of that. The mental note's not gonna stay. Oh, do I really have no pens? I've I've got a sharpie. I've, a sharpie will do. I've made a, a physical note. But I really love that idea. I think that would be so fun. Oh, I wonder if I could do one tonight very quickly. <laughs> hmm. Hmm, much to think about. Are you going to do a second draft with all the notes? Yes. Well, sure. I won't be starting from scratch, so this should be doable by next week's meeting. Then you'll be fine. He... Yeah, it's all about uh, learning from your mistakes. And redoing and fixing it. I think especially with something like creative writing, it's not going to be right immediately. Unless you are a, an incredible prodigy who just instinctively knows everything immediately. <laughs> There's always drafts. Wow. She sold her confidence really well, considering how much of a non-answer that was. Still, it feels like I'm doing the bare minimum. This is all any of the others should be doing. When I think about it like that, I start getting annoyed. After taking a sip of her drink, Millie takes her little worn notebook and adds something in her hurried handwriting. Perhaps a note about her tutoring or an idea for her own writing. As she finishes, she notices my glancing. Keeping a notebook handy means I can quickly jot down my thoughts when inspiration strikes. You should try it. I think it'd really help you. I always have a notebook. <laughs> I'm that kind of person. I always have a notebook in my bag. I've got I've I've, I've usually got like three notebooks to be fair. <laughs> I make notes on everything. But yeah, I love it. The the gentle parenting is it's very sweet. I feel like Mi Millie has a a really good manner for teaching. I think she'd make a really good teacher. Don't know how much use I'd get out of a notebook filled with nothing but bad ideas. Oh, that's so pessimistic. Bad ideas are fine. Most of my notebook is junk I never end up using. But the few diamonds in the rough, sometimes even just a few words, can be enough to build on. Maybe it'll help you get into a creative mindset, too. Yeah. Like, if you make a note on something and then just be like, okay, I've got this base idea. What if I take it in two completely different directions? So, like, the, the, the idea can be, I saw a cat walking down the street. It went down an alley and I decided to follow it. One branch of that could be like, I ended up following it into a different dimension and suddenly I was in the world of cats. And 
everything was like new and special or then you could go the other path and then be like I followed it down the road and realized it was a stray cat with a cardboard box full of kittens that needed rescuing and I must rescue the kittens <laughs> and then you could go on another path and just be like I went down the alleyway and the cat was not there anymore and I turned around and then the entrance to the alley was also not there anymore oh god it's turned into a horror <laughs> same idea can go in so many different ways Millie may well be right, she probably is, but that doesn't mean I feel any sort of connection to what she's saying. It's like receiving a lengthy, uh, a lengthy and thought out lecture in clear and precise terms, all perfectly delivered in hieroglyphs. I will give her that she has the patience of a saint to be helping me like this. She seems to enjoy the chance to talk about the mechanics of writing with someone who cares, even if it's only out of necessity. So, what are you trying to say with all this? Think of it like art. <laughs> Instead of trying to make a gallery-worthy portrait off the bat, you're sketching out rough ideas to try different concepts from different angles. Exactly! Not the first example I'd expect to come to her mind, given the circumstances. You don't even have to show anyone. Just try describing an interesting person. Plot out a fun scene in a movie, or emulate an interesting passage you saw in a book. I think that's where you're getting tripped up, trying to write full stories right from the start without being comfortable with the act of writing itself. Without a solid foundation, the whole building falls apart. She's so good at this. She's so good at this. Every time I listen to Millie talking about writing, it makes me want to write again. <laughs> it's like, I don't even think... I'd be a good writer. I, I feel like I'm more of like a, a story creator ideas kind of person. I don't think I would be a good writer. Because I don't know how to like formulate the ideas I have. I'm definitely more of the ideas kind of person. But Millie kind of makes me want to. <laughs> and how long am I going to be doing these sketches? For the rest of your life. As long as you're writing, of course. It's a critical part of the process, no matter how experienced you are. Unable to contain my excitement, I drink the rest of my increasingly lukewarm coffee. As dispirited as I might feel from her feedback, at least it's a sense of direction. I'm not left wallowing in misery, even if I don't make it in the end. Looking up at her face, brimming with excitement at the prospect of making meaningless scraps of writing over and over for weeks or months ahead. I can't help but feel out of place next to her. It isn't just her, either. Darren's ability to, squall, uh, to scroll away about esoteric subjects, even as a freshman, still taunts me. And even Heather seemed comfortable jotting down this and that to keep our studious leader off her back. Hey, Millie? Yes? I know I'm at least partially to blame, and I really appreciate it, but... How do you find so much energy to devote to this? Writing in general, I mean... It comes from love. The question takes her a little off guard, breaking through her lecturing attitude as she thoughtfully sets down her drink. Why write, huh? I suppose that I could say something corny, like creativity brings out the best in people, or something. Spin some tale about the power of the great author's writings, opening one's mind, and taking us on wild adventures. But that wouldn't be right. I'm waiting for the bye. I'm getting there. My earliest memories are of my mother reading to me. We read a lot together, even as I grew up. Maybe it's a little selfish, but I wanted to hold on to that feeling. Maybe even share that sense of companionship with others. Making our own personal connections through reading and writing together. That's, that's so wholesome and sweet. That's Ooh. what this club is supposed to be. A place for individuals to get together and offer each other glimpses into themselves to maybe find a speck of common interest to nurture and grow. Or... Well, that's what I thought. No, it can be. It still will be. It still can be. Please. Please, protect that smile. I want... 
I love Millie. She's such a sweetheart. Hey, Alexis Melody, hello. Welcome, welcome. It is. It's so adorable. I'm... Oh, every single time I've seen Millie so far, I just want to give her a big hug. I just... I, I need to give her a hug. I... <laughs> It hurts a little to see her wistful smile slowly fade, reality seeping in through the cracks in her carefully maintained idealism. I guess it didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> it is her dejected expression. It, it breaks my heart every time I see her looking so sad like that. Every time. I'm just... Ooh, I, I love her. That was heavier than I'd expected from a question intended to simply fill the air. Well, no reason why it still can't be. Yes. 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 I guess she was expecting something more defeatist from me, given the surprise on her face. Honestly, me too. I was expecting something way more... <laughs> way more negative than that. Yes, Olive. Be the beacon of positivity we need. No, of course. Uh, thanks for the reminder. For what it's worth, I'm glad you managed to find a hobby that means so much to you. Me too. I'm so glad as well. Ugh. We all have our vices. Taking my coffee in one hand, I grab my backpack from the ground and sling it over my shoulder as I rise to my feet. Where are you off to? Much as I'd love to stay and talk more. I also like being able to pay rent, so I'm off to the diner for the evening shift. See you tomorrow, Millie. Oh, oh. <laughs> Millie's charm point is she's a failure. Hi, Caps. Hi. Hi. How's it going? It it kind of is though. It's it's the kind of like she's. I or it sounds really mean wording it like this, but. In this moment, like, she's so pathetic that I, I- I say it in, like, a sympathy kind of pathetic kind of way. That I- I kind of just want to scoop her up and just solve all of her problems for her. I'm just- <laughs> She- she just looks so sad. I just want to scoop her up and be like, there, there, we'll deal with this. We'll do this. We can- we can fix this. Because she's just so happy. It's just the way she's always- You can tell how much she lights up every time she starts talking about writing. It's- she is so passionate. She's so passionate about it. And she's also really good at putting on that front and pretending she's okay, but that... That can only last so long. Especially when a lot of it's been fueled by alcohol. <laughs> I'm so worried. But I love her. I love her. Oh, and sorry about the grumbling. Just haven't found my footing yet. I'll have a proper look over your notes when I get home and start working on a second draft. See, I, I feel like this also says a lot as well, because usually Olive is the, the pessimistic, defeatist attitude kind of person. Usually they're the one here with the negativity. But Millie is like so... So like defeated and down in this point that Olive feels the responsibility to be the positive one. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like that's a testament to to how girl failure <laughs> Millie is. <laughs> when even Olive is the kind of person to step up and be like, oh, oh, I gotta do something about this. I gotta uh, cheer her up. Because I don't think that they they have much uh, practice with um, comforting people. <laughs> uh, and cackling last week at the streamer with zero viewers comment because it's such a perfect description. It really is. It really is. As soon as I read it, I was like, that's exactly what it is. She is she is doing her best. It's not quite working, but she's, she's still doing it. <laughs> and I, I just... I want her to get her big break. I want her to get that, uh... Get that raid and get noticed. <laughs> in streamer terms. It's no problem. Make sure you buy a notebook sometime. A proper one. Spoil yourself. I'm sure it'll help. Yes. Get a spiral-bound notebook. 
Spiral Band is the best because you can rip out a page if you want and it doesn't damage the spine like bound notebooks do. That's, that's my word of advice. <laughs> As usual, it doesn't take long for her to bounce back. At least we're not parting on a sad note. With that, I give her a curt wave and start off uh, out of the cafe. I can't say today was exactly productive, but I suppose I should count myself lucky that Millie's taking this tutoring seriously. Ah, to be fair, I feel like Olive is only really super negative about themselves. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I, they, they're definitely not the type to put down anyone else. I think if they saw someone spiraling, they would do their best to be like, hey, stop spiraling. It'll be okay. But when they're spiraling, at, at least they, I, I feel like they, they do recognize when they're spiraling as well, though, because of the whole, like, uh, at the very start, it was like, well, if I just keep thinking about this, I'm going to get worse and worse. I need to distract myself. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, they know, they know, they know how to deal with when the brain is full of gremlins. <laughs> Looking back, I see Millie taking her notebook in hand to take yet more notes for herself. I wonder if anyone else gives it much thought. <laughs> come, come to off, guys. Oh, no. Hi. Oh, I, I, I saw you make that post earlier as well, mentioning, oh, looking forward to see people at off, guy, even though I'm not going to be there. Because I've I've been having the same thing. A, a little part of me's been like, oh, I'm I'm really excited to like meet people in person. I'm not gonna be there in person. I don't know why my brain is thinking that. But uh, I'm excited for Offkai though. <laughs> Go to Offkai. I I will buy you a coffee as well, even though I won't be there. How would I? I don't know how I'd do that. Anyway. <laughs> Death comes for me. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Hi. Hi, Mom. She flicks my back with a hand towel, but I barely flinch. I've had some long days here, but today was crazy even by our standards. I shouldn't complain. A lot of people my age can't even get a job, and having my mom around does make things better. I get along fine with the other staff too, though we rarely actually share a shift. Still can't bring myself to eat burgers though. Not after making them one after the other for hours on end every shift. Mom visibly reassesses her snark after I push myself off the counter and look up to her. Guess I'm not hiding the exhaustion well. Not like I was really trying to. <laughs> Thanks for your work, dear. It was a rough day, but... You got through. No. I'm going to sleep forever when I get home. I don't know about forever, but you've earned yourself a good rest. Yeah. She looks to me for a moment before shuffling herself into a booth, patting the seat next to her. Are we gonna, are we gonna have mom talk? Are we gonna have a little chat? <laughs> Also, Diva, hello! Twofold Tuesday, welcome! And Lanzo, and welcome in! Welcome, welcome! Welcome to Twofold Tuesday, everybody! I'm getting really passionate about writing because of Millie. <laughs> welcome, welcome! Eager for an excuse to rest my feet, I oblige. Are you okay, Ollie? I'm fine. Just tired. They've got a lot on their plate. No point in complaining to her. It's not like mom can change anything. When I think about it, I think most of my problems come down to feeling like I have no control over my life right now. With so few cooks and mom already overworked, I have to fill in when I can at the diner. Then there's the fact that all my time between sleep, school and work is filled with frantic studying just to keep up with the others in my classes. How is school going? You said that you joined a new club, right? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, the writing club. It's a bit weird, but at least it'll help me get the credits I need. A bit weird? A bit weird? They show up whenever they feel like it and barely even pretend to work while they're around. 
The supervising professor doesn't bother attending at all. All oh, while wow, the leader is. Sorry, I just dropped my phone. It's fine, I don't need it. <laughs> all while the leader is passionately trying her best and not doing great in herself. Well, she tries her hardest. I wish I had an ounce of the passion she has, whether for and writing or anything else. And make this a lot easier. Uh, sounds like she's an admirable person. Yes, she is. She is. That's what bugs me. Oh, you think she's being taken advantage of? Yes. Yeah. Everyone shows up, but doesn't bother putting in any effort. She must know that. But she just smiles through it. Uh, it feels so bad. It feels so bad. Hold on, I need to... I need to sit up properly again. I've, I've started slouching. There we go. <laughs> I think that's what bothered me so much about her tutoring. Am I taking advantage of her enthusiasm like the others? The only reason I'm in the club is to pass my exams after all. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, Dima! Thank you. Let me have a sip of my monster. Yeah, and I did the posture check myself. Hold on. Give me a second. There, I did it myself, so I'm, I'm gonna redeem it. <laughs> I redeem it myself. Let me have a big stretch. All right, there we go. I, okay, I... Oh, oh my, my mic arm is so squeaky recently. Every time I try and move my mic slightly, it squeaks so much. I need to... My chair squeaks too. Everything I own is squeaking at the moment. <laughs> I've got to, like... Just go around my room with, like, a can of WD-40 or something and just fix all of the joints in everything ever. <laughs> but thank you for the hydrate! Yeah, it was a big squeak. I know, it's so loud. Why are you so loud? Why does it do this? It's okay. I shall simply not move. I shall simply stay where I am now. I will I will freeze on the spot like a statue. I'm not a good statue. I blinked. <laughs> Squeaky time. Oh, is it? Is it actually Rat? Is she in here? <laughs> is Rat hiding in my mic stand? I hope not. I would probably squish her because I keep moving it. <laughs> Can I spray your joints while you're at it? Um, if if it would do anything, I 100% would. But I, I don't think it would quite work. <laughs> Thing Rat's hiding in the Off Kai Hotel. Yeah, I'm, there's so much to prepare. I, I really do not envy the staff of Vafkai. There's so much going on. But uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for it. But uh, I think the fact that Olive is worrying about this proves that they're not just taking advantage of her. Because if they were taking advantage of her, they wouldn't be worried about it. <laughs> it's like a show we were watching the other day. Um, recently, me and the family, we've been watching uh, Dead Boy Detectives, which is a, a, a new show that came out recently. It's really good. It's so fun. It's from, like, the, the Sandman universe. And it's been really fun. But there was the line in it, like, I, one of the characters said, I don't want to be a bad guy. And the other one said, bad guys don't worry about if they're bad guys. And that one really stuck with me. Like, I, I really loved that line. I was just... It, it feels like this situation now. It's like, I think if you're worried about taking advantage of someone, then you're probably not the kind of person who would take advantage of them because you'd find a way to like repay it or make it worthwhile. Because like the kind of people who would worry about taking advantage would want to make it right. So then they're not taking advantage, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think you can take advantage of people and still feel bad about it. Yeah, it's you. It's easy to take advantage and not realize, but it's. I think it's. It depends on like what you do after that. Like if you realize you've taken advantage of someone and you don't try and at least make it a little bit more right or apologize, 
that's different to like realizing you've taken advantage of someone and just being like, well, whatever. Like that, that that's like the the difference. It's like the mindset. And Shy Pie, hello, welcome, welcome. Been meaning to watch it. Oh, it's really, really good. We're currently, I I think we're like episode six or something. But it's it's really, really fun. It's so good. I've been having so much fun watching it. <laughs> We've been putting a quantum leap watching on hold to check it out. And it's been really good. It's so funny because we started watching Quantum Leap as a family because we ran out of things to watch together. And then Fallout came out and we watched that together. And now Dead Boy Detectives has come out and we're watching that together. And so Quantum Leap is kind of like in the background, like we we'll, we'll carry on with that soon, but um, new things, good shows. But it, it, it's very good. I highly recommend it. Also, I love, I love when shows have like British main characters as well. As I think to myself, I notice a familiar smile on Mom's face. The same she gave me as a child whenever she saw through a petty lie. Whenever she saw what I was actually saying. I'm sure she'd be happy to see you care so much. Yeah, exactly. It's like the, the fact that Olive is worrying about it proves that they, they do care and they wouldn't actively take advantage of Millie. Oh, they had a guest appearance on Doom Patrol. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, it's... it's From, like, the perspective of somebody watching it, highly recommend. It's it's a lot of fun. It's also a lot. It's it's a lot in general, but it's, it's really good. I don't know what you're talking about. Olive, don't be like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe I have a future in writing after all, with how easy I apparently am to read. <laughs> oh, I love that. Either way, it sounds to me like the club being all on the same page would help the both of you out quite a bit. It would. So is that my job now? Do you think I should be doing something about it? That's for you to figure out. You know best. All I'm saying is that sometimes doing things we're not used to is a good thing. Life would be awfully boring if we all stayed the same our whole lives, right? So true. So true. It, it is so fun to, to discover new things. Like, if, if I just stayed the same my whole life, I, I would not be a streamer. <laughs> I would not have become a VTuber. I would... What would I even be doing? I don't know, I've changed so much, like, in various ways throughout my life. Like, when I was young, I was, like, a little bit bossy. I was, I was like, a, a little know-it-all child, but in a friendly way. Like, I didn't have any enemies, like, when I was a very young child. Like, people got along well with me. I did think I knew everything. And whenever we would play games in the playground, uh, I would always be the Blossom of the Powerpuff Girls. I would be the Sam of the Totally Spies. I would always be like the leader character. <laughs> and then as I became a teenager, I fell very much more into like, I think it was like, as I realized I know way less than I thought I did, I fell more into like a follower kind of role. And now like as an adult, I think I'm more of like, I can lead if I have to, but I prefer being a follower. I, I prefer having someone else calling the shots, but in a way where I can, like, also call some of the shots if needed, without feeling like I'm taking over, if that makes sense. So yeah, I've changed, like, a lot as I grow up, but I think that's just part of, like, maturing as a person as well. <laughs> like, nobody stays the same their whole life. Otherwise, everybody would be a little baby. That's a horrific thing to think about. I wish I hadn't thought of that. Let's 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 carry on. Yeah, I guess. Oh, I almost forgot. If you need any time off work for club things, just tell me. I'm sure you can pull some strings. Oh, she's such a good mom. I cringe a little at her overacted wink. 
I've no doubt Mom's doing what she thinks is best for me, but I couldn't possibly ask that of her. She's already run off her feet just to make ends meet. Not that she'd tell me so. There's an unwritten understanding between us that we're both in this together. Writing might not come naturally to me, but I guess I owe it to Millie to do what I can for the club. It feels wrong to use it to pass my exams, then bounce and leave them to their fate. See, this is what I mean! Like, the fact that they recognize and they don't want to take advantage of Millie shows that they would do something about it and they wouldn't... They wouldn't do this. Because that would be mean and they're a nice person. <laughs> Somehow, it feels like an even steeper slope to climb than all the other stresses in my life right now. Blah bloop. A few days later. Hold on, I, I need to check something very quickly. There's something going on under my desk and every time I try and change my posture, I'm hitting something and I'm really worried I'm gonna hit, like, a plug or something and turn my computer off. So I need to double check this very quickly. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate too. Let me, let me sip, sip and check. <laughs> Muffins. Yeah. Okay, that's better. get back into position with my squeaky mic stand. Okay, that's better. <laughs> I'm not kicking plugs anymore. I'm, I'm not kicking plug, plug adapters. My computer should not randomly turn off. But it's muffin time! And oh, what would be worse though? Not even thinking about taking advantage of someone or knowing you are and still doing it. Well, I think... I think both are bad, but in my personal opinion, I think it would be worse to know that you're taking advantage of someone and continue to do it. Because if you don't even realize you're doing it, I think that is, that's very different to like actively doing it. Like ignorance is, it's not great. It's not great to have that kind of attitude and accidentally do that. But at least if you don't realize, you can be told and then not do it again. Whereas if you're actively choosing to go out of your way to take advantage of someone, like that's, that's clearly worse to me. <laughs> All right, here we go. To my side, a couple plastic bags shift together as I walk. By some miracle, the half dozen hearty muffins somehow survived the bike trip over. It's not often that I get the chance to cook for others outside of work, though my motivations aren't exactly pure. If Millie's optimism can't get people interested in the club, then maybe outright bribery will. <laughs> I like, I like that train of thought. I like that. Coming to the door, I can already hear Millie's muffle, muffled lecturing. Taking a breath to summon what little energy I have at this time of day, I take the door handle in hand and swing it open. Millie moves to welcome me in, but she trails off in confusion as her gaze falls to the bag by my side. Tanya beams a grin with an arm around the back of her chair, contrasting to the stiff and overly formal Darren. Heather is not here. It's not the first time she's outright skipped, so not the biggest surprise. With a cursory greeting, I drop the bag onto the table and roll down the sides, plucking out several large plastic containers and popping open their lids. The sweet smell rises from the food, despite having been baked in the morning. Everyone gathers around, their eyes sparkling as I finish unpacking the rest of my morning's efforts. If they took half as much interest in the club as they did this, we'd be in business. 
<laughs> Olive, what? Did you get lost on the way to the baking club or something? Says the woman in her mechanic jumpsuit. <laughs> Cooking and baking is a bit of a hobby, so I just figured I'd bring some stuff in as all. Oh, that... Look, look how happy she is here. Yeah, I loved when it was like the starry eyes. I love that expression. <laughs> well, no complaints here. Free muffins. Take what you like. I didn't bring these in for show and tell. Just have them while you're writing or whatever. I hope I don't sound ungrateful for asking, but what's the occasion? Well, you know... Uh... The occasion is... I felt bad for you. <laughs> Olive cooking is literally your job. I mean, that's true. It is their job, but there's there's a vast difference between like cooking a full meal or baking baked goods and flipping burgers. <laughs> it's there's a there's a very big difference. It's their job isn't really to cook meals. It is to um to make food edible. <laughs> I don't think they're they're serving like fine like gourmet dining at the diner somehow. I have no idea how to word this in a way that isn't tinged with pessimism. The club's had a rough start this semester. I figured something like this might improve the mood a bit and get people motivated is all. No, I thought that was good. That didn't, that didn't seem pessimistic. That's a really good way of wording it. Thankfully, it looks like that answer is more than acceptable as Millie's initial shock melts into a smile. Oh, protect that smile. Protect the smile, please. That's really sweet. Thank you. It's not the first time I've seen her smiling, but something about it this time, combined with her tone, feels considerably more genuine than before. The sincerity of it is enough to make me look away before I start blushing. With no need for further prompting, the feeding frenzy begins as multiple hands dive in at once for this this treat or that, with a single chocolate-flavoured muffin rescued for myself. Heading to my usual desk to get back onto Millie's editing notes, I turn around to see the club members chatting away between themselves. Millie delicately tries to catch the crumbs with a hand below her chin, while Darren's technique consists mostly of taking small nibbles of it at a time. Tanya, meanwhile, shows no such restraint. I could imagine Tanya being the type to just smush the whole thing in her mouth and then have, like, hamster cheeks. <laughs> uh, reminds you, you need to get a can of chickpeas so you can bake some brownies. Ooh! Ooh, I know, I, I'm really bad at cooking and baking. I, I, I can just about bake cupcakes, and that's about it. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a cooking fan. I'm not a fan of being in the kitchen. I'm like instant noodles and things I can throw in the oven. That's, that's all I tend to make. <laughs> I was hoping people would take my while you're writing suggestion to heart, but the club ended up looking more like a party instead. At least Millie seems to be happy, happy chatting away, so I'm fine calling it a small victory. Maybe I should make the most of the social atmosphere, especially since I'm going to be around these people for a while yet. Oh my goodness, oh my god, oh, oh. We save, we save. To her own beat. <laughs> we save. save ha huh. we know who right well it's gonna be all of them eventually <laughs> the answer of we know who like i i, I want to know about all of them like it's not an easy choice i'll be cooking fun well i 
I don't find cooking fun. I find cooking stressful because I always worry about things going wrong and I don't find it an enjoyable experience. But my brother finds cooking fun. My brother is, he's really good at cooking. He's, he likes to experiment while he's cooking as well. We have like a whole herb and spice rack because he really enjoys cooking. So thankfully I don't have to. Thankfully, I I don't have to stress myself out with cooking <laughs> because he's he's the one who is willing to do the cooking. But yeah, it's it's like I I understand that some people find cooking fun and really enjoy it, but I'm not one of those people. It really really stresses me out. <laughs> I love the icon for Heather too. It's just door. Nobody there. Door. Darren. Oh, it's like, if you mouse over the Darren one, it's like a bite out of the muffin. If you mouse over another one, it's like the empty muffin packet. And then mousing over that, that's like a closed door. The tiny one has the muffins next to the bag. It's a little thank you bag as you mouse over it. I love all the little details here. I love it. I hate when people talk with their mouth full, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry to hear it stresses me out. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't... It's it's not a problem. I never have to, like, cook for fun for myself. Like, I can cook, and I have, like, set meals that I know how to make. Like, I can make really nice pasta. I can make instant noodles. That's, like, easy enough. Uh, we have a rice cooker, so I can do things with rice very easily. And just, like, putting chips and stuff in the oven is, like, the easiest thing to do. So that doesn't stress me out when it's stuff I know how to do. It's more like the the creative aspect of cooking or like having a recipe and trying to make a meal. Those are the things that stress me out, but they're also things I don't have to do, so I'm fine. <laughs> so I'm I'm completely okay with it. I can I can still like feed myself. I'm just not super imaginative with it. Uh, it takes you like twice as long as the estimated cooking time because so many things I know I always like check and double check and triple check I'm I get so terrified of getting something wrong yeah a friend of yours also finds cooking stressful they found a way to connect with baking though that is entertaining they'll send photos of them trying to make a single very tiny cookie shy pie that's great I love that tiny cooking Oh, you burnt instant noodles before. Oh, no. What happened? Did you just forget you were making them? I have had a couple of situations where I've gotten distracted and come back and my noodles have been very close to the point of being inedible, but not completely. But I've never managed to actually burn them. <laughs> That's quite impressive. I'm in a... In, in like a devastating way. That is quite impressive. Yeah, oh, it's more that it's very enjoyable to you, so hearing someone stress over it is saddening. Oh, but th that's the kind of thing where d it, you shouldn't take something like that personally. If it's something you really enjoy, then nothing can take that away from you. You can enjoy that as much as you like. It's like, if I... It's like, if I hear people say that they really don't like slow-paced video games because they get bored and they don't enjoy it, that doesn't make me sad. Even though those are the kind of games I like to play the most. It doesn't make me sad, it's just like, well, you have a preference and that's fine. You can play the, the fast-paced adrenaline ones, and I will play the, the slow, easy-going, slow-paced ones. <laughs> but yeah, it's... I, th I think it's important to not let other people's feelings bring you down too much because that's the kind of situation where it's like it's it, it's nice to empathize with people it's nice to be able to relate with people but not if it makes you sad like <laughs> like that makes me a little sad it's you you, you shouldn't feel sad about the ta the fact that I don't enjoy cooking because there's always going to be people who don't enjoy cooking. Like, there's everyone has their own things they like and dislike. And so you can't, like, feel too strongly about someone disliking something you like. 
because like if you if you dwell on that then that'll bring you down but if you think of it in a different way you think of it like okay you get stressed out by cooking but that's okay because your brother really enjoys it and you get really nice meals that way then that's a more positive spin on the exact same scenario and it'll make you smile instead of feeling sad <laughs> although it is it's like it's very easy to say this out loud and then for brains to not recognize that either way because lord knows brains do what they want sometimes my favorite is when my brain starts dwelling on something that is not a problem and turns it into a problem and then even though i'm even though i know it's not a problem my brain will still be there whispering away like hey but it could be a problem isn't that a problem so it's yeah it's, it's like a, a very easier said than done kind of thing but yeah it's it's i i think yeah oh just over empathetic from neurodivergence don't worry about it no it's but at the same time it's like i i do want to mention as well because it also like if you make comments like that it kind of then puts me in a position where i feel like i have to justify myself which then also makes me sad so it's little things like recognizing what I, I don't know how to word this properly I'm, I'm so bad with words <laughs> but uh it's I, I don't know where I was I, I was trying to go somewhere with this but I, I don't know how to word things properly I'm really bad at word <laughs> but I hope you get my my gist where I'm coming from at least but ah uh, not enough water oh. See, whenever I'm making instant noodles, I, I measure the water out. I, I, we have a measuring jug, I always precisely measure the water out, so I know exactly how much water's going in there, <laughs> and how long it will approximately take. I, I have everything like down to a T now. I've been making instant noodles for so long, I've got like a whole process for it. But yeah, uh, ba boom Oh, do I prefer salty or sweet snacks? I, I like both. I like both things. I like uh, I like salty snacks and sweet snacks. It depends on what I'm in the mood for. But uh, I think I mostly have more of a sweet tooth. I think if I'm if I'm not particularly feeling like either kind of snack, I will tend to lean towards sweet things. I think I like sweet snacks. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, shy pie. Yeah, don't want to hear a person justifying their interest to me. Want to hear someone cutely ramble their interests at me. Yeah, same. I'm like... I, I say... When I say cooking stresses me out, it's like from a sense of because I want you to know that about me, but I want to know why you love cooking. I, I, I love hearing about cooking, and that's it's why I mention Xander as well, because Xander loves cooking. He's really good at it. And it's always, it's always so nice when he's just like, uh, I tried something a little bit different with the stir fry today. I put something else in, let me know what you think. And then you take a bite and it's just incredible. It's, <laughs> it's the nicest, it's so good. But yeah, I'm the same though. I, I, I really love when people are like super passionate about something and they start talking about it. There's, there's like a real, like, you can tell when a person lights up. I love it so much. <laughs> it's really nice. I Like, even if I have no idea what someone's talking about, if, if they're having a really... If they feel really passionately about it and they're having fun talking about it, it makes me happy, too. Like, I really enjoy it. <laughs> it's, it's like there's something so nice about someone feeling really like passionate and happy about something and just talking about it it's like in here as well with millie like i i don't think i would make a good writer but i love hearing her talking about writing i it's making me want to explore storytelling more even though it's like not the kind of thing i would keep pursuing i i really love the way she you can tell she's she loves writing like i i love that and it's why, like, every time Millie starts talking, I'm just here with a silly grin on my face, like... She's so happy. <laughs> it makes me happy. Yeah, right! It's like when other people have an excited energy. It's, it's so easy to pick up on that, that energy, too. 
it's it's really nice it's very nice but yeah it's it's why i always get so sad as well when people start getting passionate about something and then they'll stop and be like i'm sorry i should stop talking about this now i'm being annoying because i can guarantee i've never once felt annoyed by someone talking about something they love like unless i've actively said okay i have to go goodbye and they keep talking i would never be annoyed at someone like being passionate about something and sharing that because like sharing that joy with me it also brings me joy i love it Oh, your favorite aspect is being able to get a good tasting meal while being able to properly substitute rare or unusual ingredients. Yeah, that's... I can imagine that could be such a challenge. Because sometimes you can think something would be a good replacement for something, but something might be different, like the taste or the texture. Yeah, that's... that's, that's a real skill to have, to be honest. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's something that I'm also aware of, like with my mum too. My mum likes to bake from time to time, but she also has to have a gluten-free diet. And gluten-free baking can be such an adventure sometimes. Like the, the best advice I have is don't just have a regular recipe and use gluten-free flour because the texture's not gonna be the same. <laughs> but she's gotten really good at um, She's gotten some really good recipes for, like, it's mostly brownies. Her gluten-free brownies are incredible. They're so nice. Whenever she bakes them, I'm like, I'm, I'm having some of those. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, if someone random at a bus stop starts talking to me and my bus comes. Well, that's, that's a slightly different situation. Like, I think I would be a little weirded out if I was at a bus stop and someone started talking about their interests to me. I'd mostly be confused, I think. <laughs> I'd be very confused. I'd be like, why are you talking to me? Do I know you? Hello. But no, it's, I, I, I always love passion. Passion always makes me feel happy. Anyway, I don't know who to pick first here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a poll. And I'm going to trust people to not do a three-way tie, because I feel like a three-way tie would be harder than a than a, a double tie. But I am going to do a poll here to see what we do first. I I plan on going through every option eventually, so... <laughs> so it's not like a super important choice. But let's make a poll. Oops. We've got Tanya, we've got Darren, we've got Heather. I'm putting this up. I'm gonna start the poll. I've got my poll showing on the screen. Let's see who's gonna win. I That wasn't a challenge, by the way. That was not a challenge to try and make a three-way tie. <laughs> it was not a challenge. But, uh, let's see what, what happens this way. See, I'm, I'm curious about all three of them, so I genuinely don't mind whichever direction this poll goes in. I'm happy with like any of them. I want to know about all of them. Okay, uh, Darren and Heather are in the lead at the moment. So probably not Tanya this time. I am so curious about both of them. I, th I think Darren has quite a lot of like anxiety stuff going on that I would love to talk to him about and give him head pads. But I'm also so curious about Heather as well. I'm really curious about Heather. <laughs> <laughs> no no three-way tie, but what if two-way? Well, it is twofold after all. I guess I should expect this. I even made the poll a bit longer too, hoping that people would be more inclined to not make it tie. But it's okay. Push comes to shove, I have my, my trusty D20 with me. Alright, oh, I have a... 
I have a d6 as well? That would be easier, like, if it does end up being a three-way tie, because I don't trust anybody. I have dice for either way. Okay, we do have a tie. A little part of me was just, like, waiting for someone to drop a vote at the last minute for Tanya to make it a three-way tie. I'm very glad that didn't happen. But we do have a tie between Darren and Heather at the moment. Okay, so odds, it's Heather. Evens, it's Darren. Let's see what I get. It's a 16. What did I say was evens? Darren. Did I say evens was Darren? I've already forgotten. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. Odds was Heather, evens is Darren. So we're doing Darren. We're... I could have worded that better. We're, we're gonna be approaching Darren. Let's see how Darren's doing. I hope he's okay. Yeah. The, the, the classic tied vote. I should expect it at this point. It's why I always have my dice. <laughs> but yeah, let's reach out to Darren. I think especially with him being so shy as well. He'd probably appreciate being reached out to. Hopefully I don't startle him. I feel like I'll, I'll like tap him on the shoulder and he will jump and run out of the room, but... Okay, here we go. Let's reach out to Darren. Uh, step one, casually approach Darren. <laughs> that reaction to your own comment, to my own comment, made you splash water all over your kitchen by accident. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really good at um, not thinking before I speak. You're welcome. Oh, now that the choice has been made, Darren's your favorite writing club choice and no one ever picks him first. Well, I have. I have. Honestly, it was between between him and Heather, but I, f I feel like he's more of a priority considering he's actually here. So I'm, I, I wanna get to know him more. I. I, I want to just give him a hug and tell him I, that I feel like that's a recurring theme for this game. Every time I meet someone in this game, I just want to give them a hug and tell them things will be all right. <laughs> Even down to Olive as well, like the protagonist character, I just want to give them a hug and tell them it'll be okay. <laughs> oh, they're, they're all so great. <gasps> Me now, hello. <gasps> you picked him first. That's your guy. Ah, uh, somehow that doesn't surprise me. I could I could imagine you getting to this choice and just immediately being, it's Darren time. <laughs> but hi, welcome, welcome. It is Darren time. I should probably take the opportunity to talk with Darren. He keeps to himself so much that I don't often get the chance. And I'd like to think there's some camaraderie in, the, in being the two newest club members. He nibbles at the corner of a muffin as I walk over, taking exceptional care not to drop so much as a crumb. It's an impressive effort. Hey, been a while since we caught up. How's it going? No, we made him jump. <laughs> I knew, I knew he'd jump. <laughs> Fine, I guess. I'm doing all well in my classes at least. Yay. I wish I could say the same. It's already feeling like a struggle to keep this conversation going, and we're only three sentences deep. I, I feel like I'm losing my mind as well, because I'm, I'm so sure I recognize his voice. But I don't know where from. So, what are you hoping to get out of college anyway? You might be new, but it sounds like you have some idea. It's not really exciting. You're gonna be disappointed. Hold on. I, oh, I, it's been it's been so long since I played. Please be happy. I'm so worried about getting it wrong. <laughs> I'm embarrassing myself. I feel like he sounds very similar to the uh, the 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 dryad guy in Please Be Happy. Is it the same voice actor? I hope it is, and I'm not just embarrassing myself. Maybe he just has like a... 
like the kind of voice that you hear and you're just like I've, I, I, I recognize that voice like sometimes it feels that way even when I've not like heard someone speak before I'll be like it's a very a very comforting voice I'm like I know this it might be it might be is don't don't say it like that now I, I, I need to look it up now hold on Not find anything when I want to. Only one way to find out that only one way to find out that I don't know how to Google anything. Oh come on. Oh wait, I've got like the I've got all the art books and stuff. I've got like the credits things. <gasps> yes, it is! Oh th thank you. <laughs> thank you for confirming for me. As soon as I was like thinking in my mind, I was like, this is going to this is gonna play on my mind until I realize it. Yeah, oh, he was actually cast as Darren first. Oh, I love that. I love it, but but then I ended up playing Please Be Happy first. Uh, Darren and Cyrus were actually recorded in the same session. That's so cool. That's so fun to know. Thank you, thank you for like the, the behind the scenes knowledge. <laughs> it's like, as I, as I was listening, I was just like, no, I definitely, I definitely recognize his voice. Where do I recognize his voice from? Just gently losing my mind. Thank you. Oh, all right. Back, back to actually getting to know him now. Nothing wrong with boring. Yeah. Historian. I wanted to study history. That fits so well. He's right, that's about as standard as they come. That that somehow just feels so so right for him. Uh, maybe that explains why he couldn't write so quickly. The history courses I've taken were all about essays, and anyone who wanted to get anywhere would need to be used to writing them. Suppose a writing club's a good fit for someone who's going to be drowning in essays by default. I guess so. It helps. I like writing fiction too, though. They're different skill sets. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah, there's a few VA that you can like instantly recognize. And one of them is Alyssa Park. Yeah, I, I love when I love when like I hear actors in things and I'm like, I've recognized that voice. I've heard that before. I I know your voice. Hold on a second. <laughs> Especially because like for similar things, there tend to be like similar casts as well. Like, it makes sense. Like, they're, they're right for the roles, so you hire them again. <laughs> but it's always so fun when, when like, you're, like, playing a game that's fully voiced and then being like, I recognize that voice. Hold on. It's a lot of fun. Yeah? How's the club been for you lately, then? Millie seems all over that kind of stuff. Uh... He opens his mouth to answer, only to second-guess himself. He folds the little paper cup that previously housed his muffin and excuses himself from the conversation to grab another. I idly wonder why someone so studious didn't show up to the book signing. Anxiety. Uh, Heather's not exactly a mystery, but I really thought he'd at least come along, out of duty if nothing else. Either way, I guess that's all I'm going to get out of him today. I'll check in with the other two a bit later. Hee <laughs> There's quite a lot of food here. Why'd you make so many different flavors? Why not? Didn't know what you guys would like. Besides, muffins are easy because you can throw in whatever's handy for flavoring. Chocolate chips, cocoa, fruits, that sort of thing. The others seem to like them too. It's good to see everyone chatting like this. Yeah, bringing people together, even though they're still not um writing. 
It's progress. All two of them. Have to admit, it's different than when you do it for a job. After a while, you forget how nice it is to watch people enjoy the food you've made for them and having a good time while eating together. Yeah! I love that. It's very true. It's it's nice to make people happy. Like <laughs> It's it's such an important thing. Like it is so lovely to make other people happy. Like that's that's how I get a lot of happiness. <laughs> I get very happy when other people are happy. It isn't long before Darren says his goodbyes, pushing the last chunk of muffin into his mouth with his, with his thumb on the way out. As Tanya sees him off, she looks back. So, the big question. Who gets the rest? Rock, paper, scissors. We ended up getting through about half of them by the looks of it, even with Darren and Tanya's appetites not quite being up to the task. I do appreciate Millie looking to me first for an answer. I can make more any time. You guys decide between yourselves. Oh. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors? Wait, I called it. Nice. Going by how fast Millie agrees and takes up position, this must be a normal way of sorting out disagreements between the two. Their faces look oddly scary given how low stakes this is. Without a word of communication, they begin. The rounds, apparently being best two out of three, going by so fast that I can barely keep track. Graceful in victory, winning the final round with paper to Tanya's rock, Millie silently grins ear to ear as Tanya sighs. Oh, such is life. Uh, see you guys later. A sulking Tanya wanders out while scratching her head, Millie waving her off as she goes. I'm alright to clean up by myself. You can go if you want. Thanks. Uh, sorry for turning the meeting into a, uh, well, this. You hardly need to apologize. It's nice to see everyone oh. enjoying themselves in the club. It's still not really the writing club, but it's, it's good. I really appreciate this, Olive. Oh. You're only saying that because you ended up with all the leftovers. <laughs> I deserve that pouting. <laughs> poke. Poke, poke. By the time I'm finally out the door, sunset's already rolled in. Given that riding in the dark makes me nervous, I start on the path to the bike rack with no detours. That urgency doesn't last long, with a familiar orange jacket out of the corner of my eye stopping me in my tracks. Oh, hey. She has headphones on, what am I even doing? <laughs> Reaching up to take them off, it looks like Haley noticed me before I could collect myself and pretend nothing happened. Try as I might to get a read on her, I just can't do it. That face of hers is inhumanly placid. <laughs> oh no, she has headphones on, she can't hear us. <laughs> Haley, no! Sup. Sup. I was just like, speaking of... She approached me. Just saying hi. What are you listening to? She takes the headphones from around her neck and offers them to me without a word. All the more curious, I dutifully take them and, after a moment to brush my hair back, hold them to my ears for a quick listen. So funny if it's just like, mega death or something. Hmm. That's about all the reaction I can muster to the tune. I'm not even sure why I asked, music is totally out of my usual wheelhouse. Left none the wiser, I give up and pass the headphones back to their owner, the item slung around her neck in a smooth and practiced motion. She quickly picks up on my nonplussed expression. They're good for tuning things out at least. Yeah, noise cancelling. I feel you, Haley. 
What do you think about when you're alone in those headphones? Stuff. This and that. She just shrugs, as much to me as her own... Uh, as much to me as her own ability to give a meaningful answer. So, I hear you're in the writing club now. Apparently so. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> well, now that you're officially part of this, try not to worry much about the arguments between those two. If either of them give you any trouble, just give me a yell. Aw, oh, Haley's great. It's not really a big deal. Sometimes people just don't get along. As she goes silent, I find myself wondering if she agrees or if I've said something wrong. I have a feeling I'm going to be left wondering too. I assume you're not following us home? Sorry? <laughs> Considering you stopped me in front of Millie's car. Oh! <laughs> the brunettes are conversing. As Haley points behind me, all I can do is give an intensely awkward chuckle to try and laugh it off. Not your best moment, Olive. Oops. Uh, sorry. No. Uh, just on my way to pick up my bike. She doesn't react one way or another, leaving me no indication as to whether or not she accepted that. Here I was, thinking I'd picked up a stray cat. Yeah. See you later. Hope the club works out for you. Now I'm just imagining Olive with cat ears. She brings her headphones back over her head, done with our conversation. That's more than fine with me, getting on my way. My pace a little faster than before to escape the situation. <laughs> Quick, someone commission Cat Olive. Quick, someone photoshop some ears on their head. <laughs> Alright, we're at a few days later. This is the end for me. They're dying again. I groan, scribbling out an entire paragraph in frustration before just crumpling the paper in defeat. If it were any other time in my life, I may have accepted the admittedly mediocre work I've been struggling over for the past three hours. Unfortunately, I can't. Especially not here, where from my spot in the corner of the diner, I can see Mom rushing to and fro to fulfill a giant to-go order that came in during her lunch break. She practically wrestled me back to the seat when I tried to help her. The very least I should do while I'm here is write a good paper, I thought, but no such luck. I can barely get a full sentence down before second-guessing it. It's supposed to be a simple creative exercise, analyzing two short stories and creating our own in the same style. What does analyze even mean? If it's a critique, at least I could just complain. Oh, oh Olive. Oh, is that grumbling I hear? <gasps> the perfect woman for the job. Ah. <laughs> I love that reaction. Millie peeks over my shoulder for a moment before giggling at my surprise, sliding in the seat across from me. Ah. I should be embarrassed at all the drafts scattered about the table. Instead, I barely grimace as she gingerly pushes some of the crumpled papers aside. I see you have your work cut out for you already, huh? Ah. My torture, you mean? Mm-hmm. Luckily for you, I'm here to rescue you. Yay! The valiant knight in shining armor. Humming to herself triumphantly, she pulls a tote bag upright, rummaging around the contents inside. She pulls two notebooks out with a theatrical da-da gesture, waving them in front of her face. Notebooks? Not just any notebooks. Take a look. In one hand, a bright pink one labeled Notes is adorned with all manner of sticky notes, bookmarks, and scrap papers sticking out from it. The other is a more plain, black without, uh, the other is more plain, black without eye-catching material besides a sticker of a cat. <gasps> good taste, good taste. Wary, I take the pink one and begin flipping through it. 
every page has a neat header, date, and notes from top to bottom. Most of them have a Works Cited section naming the textbook and relevant story. In all, it looks like a teacher's assistant a teacher's assistant cheat sheet for the entire class. Detailed, easy to navigate, and an even better resource than the textbook itself. What? How did you get this? She made it, didn't she? What do you mean? Which professor did you steal it from? I won't tell. No, she definitely made it. Oh, you're flattering me. They're my notes from the semester. I took that class already, remember? Ah, an angel. An angel, truly. No way. My face must portray... Uh, must portray the accurate amount of awe and a healthy amount of alarm because she quickly laughs and takes the notebook, closing it. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't bother being so meticulous if it was anything but writing. But since I was running the club, I really wanted them to stand the test of time. Oh, I love her. She is, she is so thoughtful. I love her. I do want them back, but... Then we can borrow. She timidly plays with her braid for a moment, looking a bit sheepish. Well, the class is pretty front-heavy on essay work. You can use them as reference if you ever feel lost or need inspiration. I... I don't know what to say. Just... obviously... Thank you. Really. I owe you. Please, it's fine. She pauses as the bell to the restaurant rings, a customer hopping up to the front and collecting their bags upon bags of takeout. As they leave, the smell of fresh-pressed paninis and fries follows. Well, actually, if you could cook something for me again, that may be a fair trade. I've been daydreaming about those muffins. Deal. That is like the easiest deal. If I pass this next round of papers, I'll make you a full course meal. It's a deal. You better not fail on purpose to weasel out of it. Th they cannot afford to fail on purpose, don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> if, only, if only I had the luxury. Millie scoots back out the booth, pulling up her tote and adjusting her vest. Well, I'm off. Junebug needs an oil change. Junebug. I'll tell your mom you're in good hands. Junebug, ah. Sure, take it. Wait, you know my mom? She gives a smug, sparkling smile and accentuates it with a little shrug. You look like her. Yeah, family resemblance. I love that she calls her car Junebug. That's so cute. And when I came in, she couldn't stop boasting about how proud she is of her kids sitting in the back working nonstop on their college papers. Ah. I sink into my seat, feeling heat rush to my face. From the corner of my eye, I see Millie giving my mom a big wave, who returns it in kind. Oh, that's so embarrassing. I love it. Right. Thanks. Oh, you're so dramatic. You should feel lucky to have such a doting mom. Well, it's more about how openly she'll air out my struggles to strangers. But yeah. Millie laughs a bit and shakes her head, taking her leave without further ado. When the bell chimes to signify her exit, I heave a giant sigh and slump entirely into the booth. The second notebook sits across from me at the table, untouched. I drag it over to my side and flip open the first page. A bright pink sticky note immediately catches my eye, so I sit back up straight to read it. Hang in there! Oh wait, that's so cute! I'll try. That's so cute. Oh, I love that. Hold on, that makes me want to do something. Give me a second, I want to do something now. Apologies for getting distracted once again. <laughs> Hold on, where are my post-its? I have, I have so many post-it notes. Where are my post-its?
file will open. I want to give myself a post-it. <laughs> Right, what font? I'm, I'm gonna use Comic Sans. Because I'm a terrible person. Now I probably have a nice, like, handwriting font. <gasps> Wait, no, I've, 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 I've got the... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh, why am I doing this? It's fine. I'm making myself a bright pink sticky note okay this is not bright pink enough how do, how do I make this bright pink bump up the saturation This is pink enough. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. This was a very important thing to, to pause the stream for. Hello, thank you for bearing with me. Very important, I had to do this. Uh... be motivated there we go that was that was worth the break <laughs> thank you for bearing with me as I indulge in my silly whims I got the post-it <laughs> right back to the actual game the other pages are filled with mistakes first drafts forgotten ideas paragraphs that forget their meaning halfway through far from anything I'd seen Millie show in public before I flip open my own notebook and begin my first draft again. Also, Mama, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in, welcome to Twofold Tuesday! How's it going? I hope you're doing well. I have a motivational Millie post-it note. A few days later. I walk up through the streets with my plastic bag ruffling away in hand. When I check my phone for directions, I catch the time as well. It's 11 o'clock on the dot. I'm right on time. The paper went well enough, a solid B+, which means I'm on the hook for a meal. Their apartment's quite a hike from my own on foot, but the traffic around here is light and the nearby buildings look well maintained, if not very modern. You are glad to hear it. How was my weekend? Um, I've had a. I managed to both sleep a lot and be really busy at the same time over the weekend. <laughs> so uh, I'm I've, I'm very busy at the moment. I'm going to be busy for a while, I think. But I'm doing all right. I'm having so much fun playing this. Like having Twofold Tuesdays has genuinely been like something keeping me going recently. Like yesterday, I had a really stressful day. But in my mind, I was just like, it's okay. I get to play twofold tomorrow. <laughs> so looking forward to this has given me something, something great to look forward to. I eventually locate the complex entrance and make my way through the gate, finding my way outside their door not long after. I give it a couple quick knocks. A second or two of silence passes before a muffled voice speaks up from inside. Uh, hello, who is it? It's me. It's just me. <laughs> with a click and a shunt, the lock jiggles open, with the door itself following soon after. Good afternoon, Olive. Uh, come right in. In we go. <gasps> That's Caprices. That has to be Caprices. <laughs> Considering she draws little otters all the time, that has to be Caprices. But oh my goodness, it feels so 
not so comfy. I follow the cheery woman as she walks back in, carefully closing the door behind me. Noticing the shoes stacked on the carpet beside the door, I shuffle off my own uh, and nudge them with my feet before continuing on in the s into the small entryway. As I scan the living room, it's clear that things have been hastily tidied up for my arrival, in the same way that a reluctant child might clean their bedroom when told to by their mother. Oh, so everything has been shoved under the sofa and in a cupboard? Ah, oh, same for you. Tuesdays have become a highlight of your weeks. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear it. I'm so glad other people enjoy it too, because I'm, I'm having such a blast playing this. I'm having so much fun with it. Like, I'd be doing it for myself either way. The fact that other people like it too really, really makes it more like, even better. Like it, it adds to the yay. <laughs> While the floor's mostly clear, clothes have been piled on the backs of seats and peek around bulging cupboard doors. It, I, I was joking about it, they literally did just shove everything in, in a cupboard, I was right. <laughs> Books, plush animals, magazines and DVDs all lie where they were last used, and the dining table's become a makeshift study area by the looks of things. Sorry for the mess. No, it's nice. Well, aside from... Aside from the mess. Um, I trail off as my gaze turns to the kitchenette to my left. Unwashed dishes and glasses sit piled up in and around the sink, and jars of ingredients sit neglected on the counter. It all must have gone bad by now. I start rubbing the back of my neck as the anxiety creeps in. My diner's hygiene and kitchen protocols have been drilled into me for years. Oh, oh, my diner's hygiene and kitchen protocols having been drilled into me for years has affected me more than I thought. No, I think that's just normal. I think it's just normal to want a, a clean cooking environment. <laughs> We're not as tidy as we could be. I just all of gazing in dismay at the kitchen. It's not that unusual, I guess. I'm surprised how unconvincing I made that sound. I'll clean up before getting started. I brought some stock and rice, so I should be able to work with whatever else is here. Okay, is there anything else here, though, is the question. Also, Suzume, I hope you have a safe flight. Have a good journey. I hope you have fun in California. Thank you for stopping in. I, I hope the flight is very smooth and nice. And that you don't sit next to anybody intrusive. I will try my best not to let Caprice burn the house down, but I, I have no control over that. <laughs> but I hope you have a lovely trip. I hope you have a lovely va vacation. Hopefully see you at Ofkai. <laughs> Thank you so much. If I have one more pack of noodles, it might be the end of me. Look, there's nothing wrong with noodles. I'm glad I came. Nobody should be living solely off ramen. Before you start, at least let me show you around. Sure, lead the way. <laughs> oh, Rika, thank you so much for gifting a sub. Thank you so much, right as she leaves. <laughs> Thank you for the gift sub, it is very appreciated. After pointing out this and that, from the location of the bathroom to where Haley and Caprice's rooms are, we arrive at Millie's room as she swings open the door. And this is my bedroom. It's a bit cramped, but you get used to it. Oh, she has so many books. She has so many books. Oh, I love that. <laughs> The sneaky secret gift sub. Yeah, the, the surprise to return to. Like, hold on a second. Thank you for the gift sub. She's not wrong about the size. Most of the apartment's space is being dedicated to the combined living room and kitchen. She's made good use of it, though. The bookshelf being filled to capacity, and a laptop and well-used notebook squeezed onto an old table in the corner. 
It's impressive that she's managed to make such a claustrophobic space feel so homely. A series of books on the shelf next to me catches my eye, and I reach out to take one of the thicker ones. The majority of her books seem to be in this style, being plain hardcovers with titles in gilded cursive, as many being non-fiction as fiction. As Millie looks back to me for comment, I realize that I probably should have asked first. Sorry, curiosity got the better of me. I have to admit though, Child Psych is a pretty niche genre. Ooh. Okay. Looking back over this particular space on the shelf, she has quite a few books on the subject. Ah, uh, looks like I've been found out. I want to write children's books. A lot of people think it's easy, but there's actually a lot of thought behind them. Oh. That makes perfect sense. That makes so much sense for her. Oh, now a little part of me's like, okay, but imagine Millie writing a children's book and Caprice illustrating it. Except they they got beef at the moment, so that won't happen. <laughs> huh. When you said you liked writing, I assumed that meant you wanted to be a novelist or something. I wouldn't mind trying my hand at it, but children's books are where my heart is. To see a parent reading my books to their child, and seeing their faces light up as they learn about the world, it might not be the most glamorous or well-paying career, but I wouldn't care if I knew I'd achieve that. Oh, that's that. so cute. That is so sweet. I love that. I love that so much. And like, I, I... I think it is like really hard to write children's books too. Because it's completely different to writing for like young adults or adults. You've got to make it easy to understand. And tell the story in a way that doesn't like overcomplicate things. You've got to like keep their attention. You've got to make it interesting. There's so many elements to writing books for children. It's a complete different skill set to, like, grown-up adult novel writing. But it really... Yeah, it fits her so well. She has that kind of, like, motherly looking after you energy to her that, like, it. as soon as she said that, I was just like, of course she does. It makes sense. Of course she wants to, to write children's books. She would. <laughs> Ah, sorry, I'm rambling. We should get started on lunch, shouldn't we? No, keep rambling, please, no. <laughs> As I nod, I find myself struck by her conviction. Oh. <laughs> With the pile of dirty dishes slowly starting to shrink, I manage to make good progress on the washing while Millie tidies up elsewhere in the apartment, either inspired or embarrassed by me being here. I could probably just shift some things aside and cook right now, but might as well go the whole nine yards if she's going to as well. The creaking of the door to the apartment barely reaches my ears past the noise of the running tap. It isn't long before I see who our visitor is, poking her head around the corner. Hi, Haley. Haley just manages to keep her placid face at the sight of me, taking off her ever-present headphones and settling them around her neck with practiced ease. I'm starting to wonder if she wears them to bed at this rate. Hey, Millie! Some weirdo's broken in and is doing our dishes! <laughs> Who are you calling a weirdo? Let them finish before calling the cops! <laughs> okay. Hi, Ailey. Has Millie really stuck you on dishwashing duty? Technically, I was here to make lunch, but there's no point in making food if there's nothing to put it on. That is true. I'd apologize for the mess, but I assume Millie's beat me to the punch already. Is it always like this? Yeah. We just scavenge whatever's mostly clean till we run out of plates. It's worked out fine for two years now. Ah, of course. Two years of living like this. I can't believe I ever had second thoughts about having my life together. <laughs> As Millie comes in, Haley gives her a quick wave. Caprice lives here too, right? 
Am I cooking for three or four? She's visiting her mom, so it's three today. Ah. Millie still comes across as annoyed at the mere mention of her. I guess the rivalry runs pretty deep. Why not just use the dishwasher? Not everyone has a dishwasher. We don't have a dishwasher. <laughs> we do not have a dishwasher in our kitchen. We have to manually wash and dry our dishes. But uh, especially like, if it's just like a, a cheaper apartment and they're all going splits, they, they probably, it's very possible they just don't have one. Three it is then. Any allergies? I'm allergic to greens. <laughs> of course you are. How am I supposed to tell if she's joking when she uses that deadpan voice? The only hint is Millie's unsurprised sigh. Yeah, that's that's me not having a dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, the I, I I wish we could have a dishwasher. I feel like it would be so much more convenient. But alas, we do not. But it's okay, our dishes still get cleaned. <laughs> oh, I'm allergic to greens. Haley, talking to the person dressed in all green. <laughs> oh, the only hint is Millie's unsurprised sigh. Millie signals the end of lunch as she sets her fork down. The curry I made with foraged ingredients, made extra mild at Millie's request, turned out to be a hit with the two. I uh, turned out to be a hit with the two, both of them looking satisfied with their meal. Thanks again for that. That was amazing compared to what we usually have. Eh, could have been spicier. <laughs> of course she'd say that. I'll leave the recipe. You can cook some up yourself, that's exactly how you like it. First time in a while I've cooked a meal for people other than myself, so I'm glad it worked out all right. Me too. Isn't that expensive? Living alone and all? I've always been... What's the best word for it? Frugal? Cheap? <laughs> That's not the best word for it, Haley. Frugal? Yeah. Well, let's go with frugal. I got it! <laughs> I'm on the Millie wavelength. I'm nice. I'm, I, I'm nice. I mean, that's nice. I'm happy. <laughs> Only needing to cook for myself saves a lot of time. Plus, I get leftover vegetables and stuff from work that are about to expire and can't be used. Ah, I do something similar. I save a bit by sometimes visiting bakeries just before they close for the day. They'll usually throw extra food in the bag for you that probably won't sell in time. Yeah, get the bonuses. The stuff that's about to expire. Do you guys actually cook much? Uh... I'm guessing that's a probably not. I can cook the basics. Haley's eyes narrow. The... very... basics. Same. Rice and pasta are easy enough to throw in a pot. Hey, me too! That's what I was saying earlier. I'm, I'm like, I can, I can put rice in the rice cooker. I can cook pasta pretty well. Instant noodles, anything that's like frozen that can be shoved in the oven, that's my cooking. And Caprice? Caprice is banned from cooking. Understandable, have a good day. Ever since the egg incident, yes. What is the egg incident? That could mean so many things. I am so curious now. I may want to hear the details, but the looks on their faces make it clear this is ground best left untrodden. I, I want to know about the egg incident now. I want to know about the egg incident. I bet she made one explode. Our conversation is interrupted by a simultaneous buzzing from mine and Millie's phones, likely from the group, uh, the writing club group chat. It's rare to get any sort of discussion in it, and I've admittedly been pretty bad about checking in myself. Millie, however, reaches for her phone immediately. Just as quickly, a frown forms on her face. Curiosity getting the better of me, I pull my phone out of my pocket to see for myself. Oh.
What's wrong? Darren? I'm presuming this is Darren because it's the same pattern as his jumper. <laughs> Has something happened? Oh, I'm worried. I'm worried now. Hey, sorry, I know this is last second. I won't be at the next meeting. Is there a reason why? I need to submit an attendance sheet to faculty soon. Yeah, sorry, just a busy week in general. Can I at least get your signature sometime this week? IDK, I'll try. And something is wrong here. This something is wrong here. Shut up, Heather. LMAO, since we're giving advance warning this time, I'm out too. Shut up, Heather. The answer's no, by the way, before you ask. Oh, go away. Ooh, she makes me angry. That's so rude. That is so rude. That is incredibly rude. That, that, oh, oh, that grinds my gears. I made an egg explode. No, I've, I've never made an egg explode. But I bet Caprice would be able to. That's my theory on what the egg incident is. I'm, I'm guessing Caprice probably made an egg explode or something like that. But uh, that is just my guess. I want to I wanna know all the details, honestly. <laughs> but no, I've never made an egg explode. I'm not really a big fan of eggs in general, like, as food. If I'm eating eggs, it's usually, like, baked into a frittata. I do like frittatas. I think frittatas are really nice. Yeah, I know you you just mentioned there's a comic that I've I've not seen that comic though. I I I haven't seen that comic and I want to know the whole story. So I'm going to I'm waiting until after I've played the game. I'm maybe I should have put like no spoilers on on, on the stream. <laughs> but it's like it's a mystery in the game. Like when I say I want to know about the egg incident, what I actually mean is I want the characters to tell me about the egg incident. <laughs> I look up from my screen to see Millie slump in her seat. Her phone buzzes again not long after, the message only making her frown more. What's up? It's Tanya. Is that bad? She said she'd get some of her friends in her machinist class to sign for Darren and Heather. Oh, that... that's not how it... that's not how it works. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that feels so bad, though. There's definitely something wrong there. We need to figure out what's wrong there. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, it's, it's it's the kind of thing that's it's hard to tell if when it's like a rhetorical question. But when I'm saying I want to know about the egg incident, it's I want them to tell me about it. <laughs> oh, this is so rough, though. I'm. Uh, uh. I don't know if th th this is like a little scary because it's like, can the club survive this? If nobody's going to sign the sheet for attendance, if the school then just goes, well, there's not enough people, we're just going to shut it down. What can be done there? It's scary. With a long, exasperated sigh, Millie drags herself up, excusing herself to the nearby kitchen to sift through the cupboards. Bad news? Haley leans in closer to me, keeping her voice down while she pries. What do you think? She doesn't respond to my sarcasm directly, instead opting for one of those shrugs she loves so much. Welcome to the writing club, I guess. Yay! I thought this was the writing club, not the drama club. <laughs> my head firmly meets the countertop in an over-exaggerated display of frustration. It doesn't last there long, with a sharp clearing of the throat from Millie bringing my eyes back upward. Hold on, I want to do something quickly. I feel like she needs this more than I do right now. <laughs> it's okay, Millie. It's okay. Hang in there, Millie. We'll figure this out. We'll make this work. We'll fix this. I believe. Remember your own words. <laughs> it 
doesn't last there long, with a sharp clearing of the throat from Millie, bringing my eyes back upward. <clears throat> I keep this bottle hidden away in the back for special occasions. I guess they don't all need to be positive ones. Either of you interested in a glass? No, this is so bad. She's just... Every time something's going wrong, Millie is turning to drink at the moment. I'm, I'm really worried. I'm genuinely so worried. She places a wine bottle and a couple glasses on the counter, now that my head is no longer occupying the space. Oh, I keep thinking of that motivational poster with the cat. Yes, yeah, as, as soon as I hear the phrase hang in there, I always think of the cat on the branch. <laughs> When'd you get that? Oh, well, you know. I'll pass. I've got a shift tonight, so I better not either. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's more than fair. I'm so worried. I'm really worried about her. Mentioning it out loud reminds me to check my phone again to confirm the time. Oh my goodness, Pillow Fort! Hello! Welcome, welcome, welcome on in. I hope the chicory went well. How's it going? You joined at a great time. Millie is turning to alcohol for bad reasons. And things are going bad for the writing club. How's it going? <laughs> How did your stream go? Thank you for, for hopping over here. Pillow fight. Come on in. Come on in. Grab a grab a cushion. Uh, knock that bottle of wine out of Millie's hands. We've got to stop her. <laughs> we need to stop her. But thank you for coming over this way. Hello. I hope the chicory went well. I hope you had a good stream. I hope it was fun. Thank you for heading this way again. I've, I've got a little post-it on my head because Millie wrote it. <laughs> but yeah, things are a little uh, precarious and twofold at the moment. Uh, mentioning it out loud reminds me to check my phone again to confirm the time. Good thing I did. I've stayed a bit longer than I had planned. I take to my feet, pushing my seat in after I'm up. On that note, I better start making my way home to prepare. Thanks for having me. Thank you for the meal. You're a lifesaver. Really. Uh, I, I really don't want to just, like, leave her like this. I don't want to leave in this situation, but they do have to go. I, oh. No problem. I wouldn't mind doing it again sometime. Uh, oh, we, we couldn't. Yes, you could. Oh, it's funny because you were like, well, after the big emotional toil, let's move over to some cozy vibes. Get over here and like, we're drinking for not good reasons to drink. <laughs> well, it's just Millie. It's just Millie, and I'm hoping that at this moment she will realize what a bad idea it is to drink and put the bottle away. I don't know if she will or not. I'm hoping she will. <laughs> but no, this is this is mostly a, a super cozy game. It's There are many emotional moments. It's a very emotional game, but it's good. It's a really good game. It's very good. Huh. <sighs> Sounds like a plan. Looking forward to it. Yes, we're cooking dinner again. Haley. The bickering manages to eke a smile out of me, despite the last second downer the club brought to our lunch. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's okay. Your game is dealing with like depression and anxiety. Oh, big mood. Honestly, I think those are, like, really important topics to cover in games and things. It's a really good way of exploring those kind of topics in, a, like, an accessible way. I think they're really important, but it's it, it can be a lot sometimes. <laughs> it can definitely be a lot. And this game has, um, this is the kind of game where every single character in it, I want to just give them a hug and tell them everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> but things aren't aren't, like, super okay at the moment. Like, the, the the veneer hasn't completely broken. Like, everyone's still okay. But there are so many, like, unresolved issues going on that it feels like they need to be resolved before everyone just completely cracks. <laughs> but things things definitely could be worse, though. I think Olive's doing pretty well. They're doing all right. They're, they're not failing their class, which is always a nice thing. 
But yeah, Olive and Millie are both so reluctant to accept kindness from each other. Yeah, it's... I think it's there's probably some that's like from a little sense of pride. Like, they don't want to admit that they need help. So it feels like accepting help will be admitting they need it. Because they, they, they do both feel like quite proud people. But I think they're getting better at it. <laughs> Just do it in like a kind of I owe you kind of sense. Just like, well, I have to help you because I owe you. And then be like, well, now because you helped me, I also owe you. <laughs> uh, well, it's all... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to read that message because uh, I do want to play Chicory at some point in the future myself. So I don't want to like know too much about it, like spoilers about it. But uh, I'm glad you had a good stream either way. Thank you for thank you for bringing the raid this way to um not so comfy comfy times. It's okay though cuz it's like we're we're exploring these heavier topics but in a like a a comfier like accessible way to explore them. But yeah, there's there's a ev everyone has a lot of problems. There's there's a lot of stuff going on. But I Nothing feels unresolvable, at least so far. <laughs> at least so far, like, th there's lots of problems. None of them seem like unsolvable problems at this point. Like, there's still plenty we don't know about everybody. So that could change. I am I, I could just be fully jinxing it and I'm gonna jump into like a horrible situation that can't be helped soon. But I'm hoping not. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> But yeah, if if you have to if you have to head off and get some rest, especially after like a heavy game, if if you've got to go and uh, unwind a little bit, then please don't feel like you have to stick around if you got to go rest or get some food or drink. But if you do want to stick around, it's like I I say that in like a joking way, like, "Oh yeah, she's turning to drink." But uh this 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 game still is really I don't, I don't know, like, the best word to describe it. It's, like, it's emotional, but it doesn't feel too much. It's, like, a really good way of, like, dealing with things going on. And it's, it's been, it's the kind of situation where, like, I'm looking forward to seeing everything get resolved. I think it's going to be a very healing game. <laughs> but, yeah, lots going on at the moment. And then Starfall, hello, welcome. How am I? I'm doing all right, thank you. Oh, I hope your stress eases soon. I hope you have a better time soon. But uh, thank you for stopping in. Welcome to the Millie Path of Twofold, where Olive just cooked a meal, and it was nice. The bickering manages to eke a smile out of me, despite the last second downer the club brought to our lunch. With a quick wave and a couple goodbyes, I leave the two to enjoy the rest of their day. Few days later oh goodness I, I hope the club survives I'm I'm genuinely nervous about the club not like like disbanding I don't want it to disband every so often I find myself covering a ship for someone who's called out sick I don't mind usually these things happen and the work's not so bad once you get into a rhythm for the day today is different however not because it's unusually busy, but the exact opposite. With a full staff on hand, which is to say mom is also here, for the expected Saturday lunchtime rush, a feeling of impatience permeates the entire place. Where is everyone? Bored out of my mind from hours of cleaning an immaculate and quite empty diner just to fill time, I prop the mop up against a wall and pull out my phone for a quick break. Hello? The bell above the door breaks me from my boredom in a flash. I fumble my phone into my pocket and skip over to the door. <gasps> yes! Oh my goodness, Darren time! Darren time! Are you okay, buddy? Buddy, are you okay? Talk to me, please. I... Hold on. Buddy, buddy, I'm so glad to see you again. I'm so happy to see you again after those messages in the group chat. 
Are you all right? <laughs> Brindley, hi. Hello. I'm 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 befriending Darren, and I'm really worried about him. I'm worried about everybody. This game is just it's really like firing all of my like motherly instincts. This game is turning me into a mother. I just I'm just like come on my my darlings, come on. Let's let's fix this. Let's sort this out. <laughs> Come here, give me a hug. I'll tell you everything will be okay. Uh, as I walk up to the entrance, I slow as I notice a familiar face. My mind crashes for a moment as the two worlds I live in once again intersect. My confusions shared by Darren, words stuck in his throat as he works through the same situation. I play too far to turn into a mom. Well, you know, considering how great Olive's mom is, I feel like it, it would be a compliment to be, like, a twofold mom. I would be happy with the title of a twofold mom. I, I'll, I'll just become everybody's mother. Like, I'll, I'll adopt Eileen and tell her I'm proud of her. <laughs> this is the second time a familiar face has casually walked through that door. One more instance like this, and I'm going to stop thinking it's just a coincidence. Oh, sorry, I blanked for a second. Uh, come in, sit wherever you'd like. That's fine. I was a bit thrown off too. I had no idea you worked here. A friend from school? Hi, Mom. <laughs> I turn beside me to see Mom idling up, her ears apparently having picked up the conversation. Uh, yeah. Darren gives an awkward chuckle, nerves getting the better of him. You two can have lunch together. It's about your break time anyway. Mom. <laughs> Mom, you're embarrassing me. Oh, you're the self-proclaimed uncle to everyone. Oh, actually thinking about it, I think I am more of like an, an auntie type figure. I don't think I would be a good... Mom, I, I wouldn't trust myself to look after a, a whole human being. But I think I'd be a really good aunt. I'd be the kind of aunt where, like, if you have an argument with your parents, you turn to me and I'm like, it's okay, you can talk to me. We'll figure this out. Now now go apologize to your parents. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll make it all work. <laughs> oh, oh, like the cool uncle who shows up on holidays and always has a gift and teaches you how to break the rules and not tell your parents. Oh, well, there's, like, there's, there's always, like, a little space for that. I think... I think it's okay to encourage a little bit of, like... Not so much rule-breaking, but, like, pushing limits a little bit. To be, like, the cool one. Like, especially when rules are, like, overly restrictive. But uh, I wouldn't be the type to just be like, yeah, break all the rules. Because that is bad. Uh, possib possibly some random guy. When can you let me out of the basement? Ha! You got the wrong person. I don't have a basement. <laughs> but welcome on in. Welcome. Uh, pull up a chair. Welcome. Uh, whoever's basement you're in, I'm sorry. It's not mine because we literally don't have a basement. We do have a loft. We have an attic, but it's full of Christmas decorations. <laughs> But welcome in. Oh, Lanzo, and you hope to someday be that kind of uncle. Yeah, yeah, a mischievous rule breaking as opposed to like malicious rule breaking. Yeah, like the little things where it's just like, uh, you know how mom said you gotta be in bed by nine, I'll let you stay up till ten. Like that kind of thing. Those little sneaky, like, wink, wink, we got a moment, we got a bit of trust between us. I think those moments are really important for children to have with adults as well because when you have those kind of like completely benign secrets it means they're more likely to trust you with like actual secrets if something's wrong because they know that you have that trust between you so it's actually a, a really good like raising a child kind of thing <laughs> Because if you're just like very staunchly like always the rules, go, 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 this is the rule, you can't argue against it, then I feel like that fosters the kind of situation where a child is more likely to shut down. What What is happening? I'm turning into Millie now. I'm like 
going into the child psych side of things. What is happening? What is this game doing to me? <laughs> See, when I was playing First Snow, I was just like, well, I am just Allison. Now I'm playing this and I'm like, well, I'm kind of just Millie. Except no good at writing. <laughs> Everyone is so relatable. It, it is great and also painful. It's cold here. Oh, you're gonna eat the trust. Oh, d please don't eat my trust. That's okay. We can we can build up more trust if you eat it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so like you clear most of your rule breaking with your niece from her parents first. Yeah, that's I, that's a good way to do it. Just to have that communication and be like, so if I if I let her like sneakily stay up, that's okay, right? Uh <laughs> I'll be stuck in time. Just... <laughs> they're just standing here like, Mom, you've made things so awkward. And they're all just awkwardly standing there now. <laughs> to be fair, we haven't actually seen Millie's writing. She could be dog water. <laughs> it would be so funny now if we see one of Millie's stories and she's just really bad at writing. But I don't know. I don't think she would be. I don't know. If she is, she is so good at selling it either way. I think, honestly, she's the type who, I think, even if her writing was bad, she'd be able to sell it. She'd be able to be like, well, it's purposely bad. It's it's a metaphor. <laughs> it's a metaphor for something. It's an allegory on how life is hard to understand <laughs> or something. Uh, and Galena, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on into the stream. I hope you enjoy your time here. Oh, Mom, if I roll a 12, I'll be unfreeze. Wait, I've got a d20 in front of me. What if I... What if I roll it? What will I get? I'm sorry, give me a second. I'm... I'm... Oh, I don't think my camera's set up. No! No, my camera isn't set up. Oh, I was going to turn on my hand cam for a second then because unironically, I just rolled a 12. I just rolled a 12 and like, I, I really wish I'd had my camera set up. I really wish I could have like had the camera on for that. That's so funny. I rolled a 12. <laughs> oh my, okay, we, we must free everybody now. We must free everyone from this awkwardness. Also, Gambler, hello! Welcome back from lectures. I hope they went well. I hope you learned lots. Welcome. <laughs> I did it. I rolled a, a, a 12 with free now. I've, I'm, I'm going to actually play the game again. <laughs> but, oh, I love that pillow fort. Like, your niece will grab a snack and you'll be like, did your mom say you could have those? And she'll freeze and tuck it behind her back. <laughs> well, I guess you're going to have to bribe me with some snacks too. I love that. I love that kind of like the the, <laughs> the aunt and uncle relationship. I think that's so fun. Oh, that's great. Yeah, just it's like the sneaky little things where a child thinks they've gotten away with so much when it's really like not super important stuff. That's that's the best way to do it. <laughs> to be the the fun uncle. Right, back to uh, this awkwardness. We're not exactly busy. It'll be fine. <laughs> Even if she weren't being insistent, it'd look bad to Darren if I protested staying with him too much. I reluctantly give a shrug and motion for him to follow. She skips off as we take a seat to give us some space, but I can already imagine the quizzing I'm going to get after he's gone. Here for lunch? It's only about 11, isn't it? Brunch? I think, I think Darren has social anxiety and he's arrived here early to avoid people. I usually eat around now if I can. Let's me get in and out before the crowds start forming. <laughs> look, it's, look, this is, this is the, um, the birds of a feather radar. This is my anxiety radar. It takes one to know one. <laughs> I'm instantly just like, I I fully recognize this social anxiety because I also have it. Oh. 
Tailoring your schedule exclusively around how to best avoid people feels excessive, but it's hard for me to not sympathize, especially with how hectic life has been lately. I take a look at the menu as he does with as much earnestness as I can muster. I've long since memorized it, having cooked every item many times, but there's little else to do as he scans the laminated sheet before him. Uh, maybe he just doesn't like cues, antisocial. I, I would think that if it wasn't for everything we've already seen about Darren so far. The first time we met him, he was just waiting outside the club room, too nervous to go in because it was loud in there. Like that, that to me screams social anxiety because I would have done the exact same thing. And I probably would have walked away and not gone in. <laughs> if I'd been in that exact situation, I, I would have been, how about no, and walked off. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm the most certain of this, of like anything I've theorized so far in this game, because I recognize it, like from myself. I'm, I, I feel like people might not even think it because when I'm streaming, I'm way more outgoing than I usually am. It's, it's very different in a streaming environment, but in real life, I am a shy baby and I never go out without my headphones on. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little baby. Okay, <laughs> I'm a little baby. I, I run away and run back home. He must be indecisive, moments ticking by as he reads and reads. I expected some small talk, but the diner's as quiet as it was before he arrived. As it becomes obvious he's stalling for time, I speak up. Hey, is everything okay? You seem a bit quiet. A little quiet. Uh, also, please don't make comments like that. That's That's a little bit weird. I'm gonna delete that. That's, that's, please don't make comments like that, because that's not cool. Not a cool thing to joke about. But I'm not gonna ban you. I won't ban you unless you're like actively outright offensive and awful. But uh, yeah, please don't, please don't make comments like that. That's, that's not a thing to joke about. That's like quite a, that can be like a life ruining thing. That's, that's not the kind of thing to joke about. Thank you. He looks away from me as he puts the menu down. He's distressingly easy to read. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised. Not just from bumping into you, I mean. Well, I guess it's sort of the same. He's quick to catch himself rambling and resets himself with a small breath. Uh, is Olive a he, she, or they? Olive, Olive goes by they, them pronouns. Olive is a they, them. They are, they are, they are the Olive. <laughs> And then Darren's he, him. Uh, Mom is she, her. Most of the other characters are also she, her. There's also Wallace in the other club who is he, him as well. I think those are the, the main characters in this. But yes, Olive, Olive goes by they, them pronouns. Uh, oh, in real life, you're fairly introverted uh, on stream character you play that's super extroverted. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's how a lot of people do it as well. As, uh, I, I think it's a very common thing to like, have like a different persona for streaming. It, it makes it very easy because it's, it's an entertainment kind of role. So it makes sense to take on a role for that. But uh, honestly, it's a little bit weird for me because it, I'm, I'm kind of still just myself when I'm streaming. I'm just a little bit more, I guess, confident. I guess it's, I'm, I'm more confident when I'm streaming. And then in real life, I, I kind of just like huddle in a corner and I'm like, oh, don't, don't perceive me, please. It's the opposite of real life, please don't perceive me. And then when I'm streaming, please do perceive me. I'm putting myself here to be perceived. Yeah, the same but different. I'm just shocked to see how well off you've been handling everything in your life. It feels like you slipped into the club pretty quick, not to mention the job you've got here. Oh. You and I are like night and day. 
I don't think so. I think these two have a lot more in common. Yeah, oh, think of it like an actor who's always typecast when they just play themselves but accentuate the parts they need for that role. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like if you if you see a film and Hugh Grant's in it and you're like, oh, you're going to be a, a pompous, awful guy. And then you watch the film and Hugh Grant is playing a pompous, awful guy and it's like, oh, wow, what a surprise. <laughs> His face sags regardless of how wildly off the mark it feels to me. Oh, never watched some of my streams, but this is fun. Oh, I'm glad you're having a good time here then. I'm glad you managed to find me. I, I hope you do manage to escape the basement soon. Wh whoever's basement that may be. <laughs> I guess that's just method acting, no? I think it's also like a situation where someone is really good at acting in a certain role. So obviously people see that and they're like, well, you're really good at this role. So I'm going to hire you for a similar role. Like it happens really easily. And it makes a lot of sense, but it can be a little painful if an actor is like typecast into a role and they want to try different things. And there's that moment of like, well, but I've only seen you as this type of character. Can you really do this? Yeah, oh, more like how oh, you could replace any Jack Black character with just Jack Black and it would change nothing. <laughs> oh, I love Jack Black. It, everything with Jack Black in, I think is just, just that man is just a joy to perceive as himself, honestly. <laughs> oh, your food got cold again after three minutes. Oh, I hope you can heat it up. Hopefully it's the kind of food that's still nice cold. But yeah, I, I, I love I love that kind of thing. If you actually believe any of that, then all I'm really good at is faking it. <sighs> oh, we're going to have a little deep talk now, aren't we? I'm, this is what I've been excited for. I want Darren to open up a little bit, but I also feel like he's the type who would not open up. <laughs> oh, you should head out soon. You got a dentist appointment in a bit. Oh, I hope it goes well. Uh, tooth, tooth Tuesday. Twofold Tooth Tuesday. It's also been a Tooth Tuesday for my brother as well, because Xander, Xander's had a, a dental appointment today as well, and. Like, depending how it goes, it might not be Family Friday this week, depending on, like, if he can speak or not, because he's having to have, like, dental work done that's, that's like, dental work. It's not like a checkup or anything. So, depending on how that goes, hopefully it's gone all right. I, I don't know if he's already back or not. I, I have not heard the door yet, but I've also not been listening. <laughs> he might already be back, but I, I hope it went well for him either way. Going from Twofold Tuesday to Tooth Appointment Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, watch him in interviews and you're like, yeah, that's Jack Black. Then watch watch Kung Fu Panda and you're like, yeah, that's Jack Black. Watch School of Rock, you're like, yeah, that's Jack Black. Good times. Good times. He's he's just really fun. Yeah, I think Super Mario. <laughs> okay, but do you mean Super Mario or do you mean Chris Pratt? I've got to say, one thing I find really funny was how uh, Chris Pratt was cast as Mario, and he he it's it's just him, but in like a kind of funny way to me. I'm really curious to know what's going to happen with Garfield. I'm I'm genuinely so curious to know how Garfield is going to go. Has gone? I don't know. I don't know if it's happened yet. I don't know anything about movies. <laughs> But yeah, Samuel L. Jackson as well, yeah. Always like the, the badass guy. But uh, yeah, but he doesn't play himself. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's, that's the role he portrays. And he's different when you talk to him off camera versus someone like Jack Black who, like, that's, that's just his personality. That's how he always is. Right, back, back to deep discussions. Hmm. Well, you joined the club too, didn't you? If you hadn't checked it out with me, I probably wouldn't have gone either. Honestly, if you didn't stick around, I would have bailed by now too. I, I, oh, I, I want to give him a hug. I really want to give him a hug. Oh, thank you for the head pad too. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give Darren a head pad as well. 
He also needs a headpat, though. <laughs> oh, actually, I think... I think he needs this more than I do right now. There we go. He can have the, the hang in there poster. <laughs> I think he needs it more than me at the moment. This post-it is going to be getting its use, I think. I think we are going to be making use of this post-it. Just post it on everyone when they're having a tough time. Just be like, hang in there. <laughs> yeah, he, he deserves all the head pads. He does. There's nothing wrong with going at a pace you're comfortable with. If you don't need to, you shouldn't have to force yourself into doing things you don't want to. So true. Oh, thank you for the hydrate too. Let me, I'm gonna have some tea actually. Have some of my tea from my tea flask. My squeaky tea flask. Ah, hydration. Always hydration. I'm gonna have some monster as well though. Some monster energy. And a posture check. I'll have a big stretch. Sit up straight. I have the posture. I am not shrimping. We're hanging in there. And oh, Suzume! Wait, I'm, I'm so glad I can keep you company in the airport. <laughs> Don't be nervous, it'll be fine. Think about what's on the other end. If you're really anxious, just think about all of the fun that is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, as long as I don't mix the tea and monster at the same time. Don't worry, I've I've already tried that. Um, I've already done that once upon a time. It was bad. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> but no, I've, I've got my warm tea flask, so that's nice. But yes, thank you for the hydrate and posture check, though. Oh, you don't hate flying, you hate airports, I see. Yeah, I feel like it can be stressful. I've never actually been on a plane. I've been in airports several times, but only to meet other people who have been landing at the airports. I've never actually been on a plane before. I do want to, is the thing. Yeah, that's what I thought it might be. It's like, you can't- you don't have to force yourself to do things you don't want to. But if you do want to do it, sometimes you do have to force yourself a bit. I wouldn't have brought it up with you if I didn't. It's just... People say the first step is the hardest, but the second step is what establishes the momentum. Oh, that's so true. Wait. Dang. You really do belong in the riding crowd, huh? <laughs> he responds with a nervous chuckle. I hope my attempts at lightening the mood didn't put him on the defensive instead. Yeah, you got new Lyri lore now. Uh, for some reason, thought I went to Ofkai before. I did, but it was virtual. It was a virtual visit. I wasn't there in person. <laughs> it's the same as this year. I'm, I'm going to be at Ofkai this weekend, but I'm not going to physically be there because I'm stuck in the UK. <laughs> and... Um, it's very expensive to get a hotel and a flight and a passport, because I also don't have a passport, so I'd have to buy one of those as well. <laughs> so sadly, I wasn't able to afford to go to Ofkai. But I'm hoping that in the future, I am hoping, fingers crossed. It's scary. <laughs> Send Lyri to Ofkai next year, but via ship, not play. <laughs> Just going to stick me on a ferry for weeks <laughs> no I'd, I'd rather I'd rather take the plane for that wait passports cost money in the UK yeah they do and you gotta pay to renew them as well <laughs> yeah I, I just have like a, a regular old ID card at the moment because I, I can't afford a passport just yet but it's mostly just because I don't travel so the passport isn't a priority but in the future, I, I do want to travel. I, I'm hoping to save up money. And I'm also thinking as well, like, depending how things go, I might do, like, a donothon at some point next year around Ofkai time to maybe go. Maybe. I've, I still haven't fully thought that through yet. That's, that's just, like, a flying thought. But it would be a lot of fun. Oh, what happens if you all spam hydrate? I'm sorry, you can't. You can't. It's on a cooldown. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm the no fun brigade. I've, I've set it up so you can't spam it. <laughs> but it's okay. I, I stay hydrated. Looking after myself. He responds with a nervous chuckle. I hope my attempts at lightening the mood didn't put him on the defensive instead. Things are hard, but you make them look easy. Even if you say it's all an act, you pull it off so believably I can't help but be a little envious. Yeah, it's very easy to create that mask. But yeah, so I don't think the confetti's on a cooldown, but it does like queue up if you do multiple ones. But I will warn ahead of time as well, if you do spam the confetti too much, I will turn it off. <laughs> Especially in a moment like this. Like, this is a deep conversation. This is not a a continuous stream of confetti for three minutes conversation. <laughs> but yeah, I love that timing there. Just Darren opening up as the confetti flies. <sighs> Admittedly, it's a skill you're more or less forced to pick up in a situation like mine. With mom working as hard as she does for my sake, I've gotten pretty good at hiding away my anxieties to avoid burdening her. Oh, that's... That's so sad, though. Or so I like to think, but she seems to see right through me anyway. Even now, I was worrying about dealing with the waiters and rehearsing how to order over and over in my head. Then there was the writing club meetup with me getting cold feet at the last second. Yeah, this is social anxiety. That's one mystery solved, at least. Given everything he's said so far today, I'm more than willing to believe it was just a matter of nerves. I remember that was one time you almost got me to cool down it. I did. It, it, it's... Because it, it's like, it's funny for a little bit, but because of the way it cues up, it, it just would not stop. It just kept going for like a solid minute. <laughs> oh, good times. Oh no, you have to reteach the Twitch app what emotes you use a lot because it's a new phone. Oh, well, you get to use my emotes now because uh, Rika gifted you a sub earlier. <laughs> so you get to enjoy the Lyri emotes at least. Time to use them a lot. If you want to. If you want to. I don't, I don't want it to sound like I'm forcing you to use all my, all my emotes. He returns to his menu, scanning over the options. I'm sure he's already looked over a dozen times already. I was worried when he flaked from the club outing, but thankfully it seems like that was misplaced. Look at them all fall on my head. Look at them raining down. Oh, that's good. Thankfully it seems like that was misplaced. Still, now that the actual problem has presented itself, the way forward seems obvious enough. I wouldn't worry about that stuff too much. I promise it's not any easier for me either. For what it's worth, I'll be attending all the club meetings till the end of the semester. If having a friend there helps at all. He. <laughs> Aw, oh, the menu loosens in his grip lightly, revealing his face to me again as it sinks down. It definitely will. Aww. Thanks, Olive. Oh, I'm so glad we could reassure him. Oh, it's th this feels really sweet. I'm I'm glad I gave him the the hang in there post. <laughs> but yeah, the gift sub was gifted right after you left for the airport. <laughs> Didn't expect you to come back whilst at the airport, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> and I really hope the flight goes smoothly as well. <laughs> Take me out the attic. Look, our, our attic. You can just climb down if you were really in there. But there's nobody in there, so I'm I don't know whose house you're in, but. I hope he can get out soon. <laughs> Hang in there, it's just like in the middle of the screen now. <laughs> Hold on, let me put that back on my head. There we go. <laughs> Make it like that size. That's a good size, I think. I've never put much stock into possessions. Oh, in possessions. A couple of plants to care for is just about the only luxury I've got going for me. As my aging bike grinds and creaks out of the school gate, however, I realize I might be taking my frugality too far. I need to pick up some grease for this thing sometime, instead of just hoping it'll keep going. 
Turning into the street, I noticed the old trolley slowly rattling onwards from its stop beside the campers. I might want to try and keep up with it as best I can, but I don't want to risk the bike, being how it is. The platform lies empty of students, except a lone woman leaning on a light pole and listening to music. Oh, it's Haley, isn't it? I'm slow to stop as our eyes meet. I idle up beside her and put a foot on the ground to steady myself. Hi, Haley. Mr. Trolley? <laughs> Try as I might, it's hard to read anything into her placid face. Something like that. Everything she says has an air of aloofness to it. Maybe I should find that snooty or arrogant, but I think that's just how she is rather than anything intentional. Oh, I just looked at the stream time. Yeah, I, I, I usually stream for four hours at a time. It's it's like my, my regular stream time. <laughs> Unless you mean like the time above my head, that's just my local time because I'm from the UK. It is 5.41 p.m. right now. Haley visibly thinks to herself for a moment, rubbing the back of her neck. Finally coming to some sort of decision, she takes off her headphones and addresses me properly. Hey, how far is your place from here? Uh, not too far. Close enough to bike, at least. Sounds good. Did she just invite herself back? <laughs> huh? She tilts her head like the answer should be obvious. She, she straight up just invited herself back to our apartment. Wow. You can visit if you want, but I have work in a couple hours. That's fine. Well, glad that's been mutually decided at least. With that, I start for home, Haley trailing along beside me. After leaning my bike against the wall, I follow Haley in and close the door behind me. She has the look of a tourist, eyes darting from one area to another. I didn't know anyone was coming, so it's a bit shabby. Don't get many visitors, really. I love that Olive is saying that after visiting their house. Like, the three roommates. After seeing the state of their place, they are still apologizing for things being a bit shabby. That's so funny to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Haley has no business calling anyone else a stray cat. Yeah, she's the one who just wandered in. Just like, oh, I'm coming back this way now. I was actually thinking how clean everything is. Yeah. Peeking through her normally enigmatic persona is an air of disbelief. I'm a bit mystified until I remember how their apartment was. And that was, that was when they knew I was coming over. <laughs> At least she's talking now. The ride here in total silence was one of the most strained experiences I've ever had. Something's eating at her, even I can tell that much by this point. This has gotta be like a... million caprice thing. That Haley wants to talk about, surely. It's a bit messy, I'm sorry. Olive, you literally own nothing. You have a couch and a table and a TV from 1997. <laughs> I, lo I love the thought of just like, I'm sorry, it's it's a bit messy. I left a coaster out. <laughs> the kitchen could be a mess. No, I don't think it could be. With Olive, I, I don't think they are physically capable of leaving the kitchen a mess. After all of, like, the health protocol cleaning stuff from the diner, I feel like they would have to actively go out of their way to leave the kitchen a mess, like, be conscious of the fact that they're leaving it a mess. Because I think they'd just do it instinctively. I think they would... <laughs> they, they'd automatically clean up after themselves. Before I work out how to fill the air between us, Haley's eyes fall on the old console sitting under my even older television. She pushes her chin out towards it, a rare glimmer of interest sparkling in her eyes. Wait, I just realized as well now, this is the perfect opportunity for me to show off. Uh, recognize the font? It's it's really noticeable when I put it next to the H from Haley. Tee hee. Tee hee. It was gonna be Comic Sans. 
And then I was like, wait, I have this font. Yeah, it <laughs> could be that the trash can in the kitchen is like three quarters full. They normally empty it before people come over. Could be very... Yeah, I, th th that's, that's the kind of thing they would probably worry about. Ba -ba -ba -ba. The old console. She pushes her chin out towards it, a rare glimmer of interest sparkling in her eyes. That old thing still work? How old are we talking? Is this like PS1? PS2? Who knows? You can try if you want. I don't get much use out of it. I want to talk to her about where this all came from, but the timing never quite seems to feel right. Hold on, let's... Oh, that looks like a PS2. That looks like a PS2 to me. Maybe. I'm going to choose to believe it's a PS2. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the pats. Oh, and thank you for the hydrate as well, Akiri. I will have a sip of my drink. But, oh, you, you see the, the font out in the world every now and then it always gives you a whiplash because you just think it's the twofold font now. Honestly, me too. Me too. I'm. I'm. If I ever see this font, I'm just gonna be like, ah, twofold. <laughs> it's the twofold font. Ah, uh, you still have a PS3. Me too. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we still have the the PS2 as well somewhere. We don't still have our old PS1, which is a shame. But I've still got some PS1 games somewhere. Oh, Susan <laughs> thank you for the posture check too. Let's have a big stretch. Ugh. And now let's see what's what's up with Haley. It's all right. I'm I'm fully postured. I'm I'm stretching. I'm sitting up straight. Oh, oh, and I've got a haiku redeem. Susan May, thank you for the haiku redeem. Fonts and typefaces. Oh. Okay, I'm going to do a controversial font haiku. I like Comic Sans. It is round and comfortable. I'm 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 doing artistic license to do comfortable as three syllables instead of four. It's easy to read. There's my my haiku about Comic Sans. I realize comfortable can be pronounced as comfortable, which is four syllables. I'm choosing that it's comfortable because I'm saying it Britishly. <laughs> to be three <laughs> but thank you for the haiku redeem can I think of another one too my brain is empty I can't think of anything else <laughs> I'm so brave for saying that thank you I, I feel like Comic Sans gets so much so much stick because it's like a very like childish kind of font but it's really it's really easy to read it's really like dyslexia friendly for a start like it's all of the the letters are like super easy to to read and make out i i, I think i think comic sans is a fine font <laughs> Do another one. How about, uh, what other haiku could I do? How about wingdings? I sure love them funky shapes. Don't know what it says. <laughs> There's a wingdings haiku as well as a bonus. Thank you. Thank you for the haiku redeem. Bam, bam, bam. You do some gambling. No, I don't have a gambling si system set up for points and stuff. But you're welcome to keep head patting me. I do like wingdings. I, it, I think it's very funny. I want to talk to her about where this all came from, but the timing never quite seems to feel right. Haley picks up a controller as I fiddle about with the modest pile of games, nodding to the first I hold up before I put it in. A fighting game. A fighting game I've tried a couple times. No sooner do I take a seat beside her and start of a match am I put on the back foot. She pushes me to the edge of the map before juggling me into the air and comboing me over and over. Her work done as the round is called, she slumps back into the cushions. 
I managed to do a bit of damage, but it's already clear that I don't have a chance of winning any further rounds. Oh, I wonder if Haley's part of the fighting game club. We saw that at the, the, the club festival thing. We know they have a fighting games club. It would not surprise me if she's a member of that. <laughs> oh, and Hikari, hello! A silent greeting. A silent acknowledgement. I nod in your direction. Thank you for stopping in. Well, if nothing else, at least this is a welcome distraction from studies and work. We start another round. I try my best, but this goes about as well as the last. With the match finally over and Haley easing off the controller, I get a chance to address the elephant in the room. So, anything on your mind? The, the most diplomatic way to say, why are you here? <laughs> just tired. Not with school or anything, just those two. Yeah. Are things really that bad? I was about to go home on the trolley, but when the doors opened, I just... If it's bad enough that she doesn't want to go back home, that's, um, not great. Haley trails off, unsure how to explain herself. Or rather, stopping herself from doing so. She puts the controller down and sighs. Maybe I should just live alone like you. Nice and quiet here. You don't sound super convincing. You got me. Yeah, she doesn't actually think that. She just wants things to get back to normal. She leans back into the couch. I'm not sure if that signifies a pause or an end to this conversation. I guess I just forgot how much I missed having a normal life with those two till you came around. Huh? Me? You coming over for lunch the other day was the first time in forever that apartment felt... ordinary. Oh, uh, Oh, it's probably gotten to the point where things have, like, gradually gotten more tense that Haley won't have realized how tense it got until it wasn't tense. And that would be her moment of, oh wait, this isn't normal. This isn't normal. Uh, NPC6251, hello! Uh, thank you for the, the very stereotypical British message. <laughs> that, that is very NPC behavior, I, I agree. Yeah, it's, it, it really is impressive as well, having like the... It's monotone, but like, not expressionless monotone. It's rare to see Millie that open and talkative at home. It was nice. Oh, oh I want to I want to help them. Hold on, hold on. It's her turn to have the post-it note. <laughs> I can almost make out the corners of her lips curl into a smile, but they're back to a frown before they get all the way there. And then Caprice came home and got in Millie's face about the wine she left on the counter. Oh. She sits there, staring into space as she recounts how the day ended. As she finishes the thought, her eyes meet mine and she corrects her posture, as if just remembering I was there. Sorry for making this weird. No, no, it's fine. You're good. She's quick to break eye contact soon after my response, retreating back to her thoughts. You should have seen them before all this. You'd barely recognize them. Uh, yeah, it feels so painful seeing them this way after playing First Snow and seeing how close they all are. It's like, oh. That's the impression I get, yeah. <laughs> Getting mileage out of that one PNG. Look, I, I literally made this just now in the stream. I need to make sh make it worthwhile. I, I need to get my money's worth out of it. But I think it works so perfectly for this too. It's Everybody is going to need this post-it at some point. Wanna hold them all in your hands like a burger? Please do not eat them. Please do not eat the two balls. But no, I, I just want to give everyone a hug and tell them it'll be okay. She thinks a little, hesitating a moment before taking her phone from her pocket. I'm left to wait as she pokes about on it. She taps on the screen, then shows it to me. What's this? Oh, it's the picture! Oh, it's the picture! Ah. 
It's the picture from First Snow. I'm... <laughs> A photo from about a year back, with Melian Caprice. I've held on to it ever since. Oh... No... Yeah, having the note on the phone also fits. It does. It really does. A group of friends crammed into a tiny room. I recognize the others as the art club members, but Caprice and Millie definitely steal my attention away, both smiling wide. It was their first college party together. I wasn't actually there, but they both lit right up while telling me about it. Ah, uh, yeah, the party that Haley was too EP to go to. They told me all about the new friends they were making, the art club that Caprice made, how Millie was going to lead the big writing club soon and do all sorts of stuff with them. Ah, uh. they had everything lined up for the future and were excited to get to it. It was easy to get caught up with her energy at the time. She thinks on her words before abruptly locking her phone and slipping it back into her pocket. I don't think I've seen Haley rattled like that before. A passing car on the street only highlights the sudden quiet. I guess it didn't really turn out like that. Not quite. Sorry again. I didn't mean to come over here and dump this all on you. She probably doesn't really have anything, anyone else who knows them to talk about this with. No, oh, really, it's fine. I can't even begin to imagine what things must be like at your place nowadays. It's gotta be tense, especially when they're, like, living... Living together, too, like you're constantly sharing a space. Yeah, I know, the emotional punch of that photo was... Right in the heart, right in the heart emotions. I'm surprised someone like you would be friends with two people who are so outgoing. Not that I mean that in a bad way, I just... I get what you mean. It's okay, it's just like the natural order of things. An, an extrovert will adopt introverts. <laughs> we met in high school. Well, more like they found me during high school. Yes, it's what Caprice does the best. She She's an extrovert and she just adopts introverts. <laughs> You make it sound like they picked up a stray cat. Yeah, she's the stray cat here. <laughs> That's basically how it went. The two of them were practically inseparable. Picked up a new friend to share. Oh. Back when they were so gung-ho about their clubs, part of me was happy that they'd found friends who could keep up with them. Oh. Who wouldn't be holding them back. Haley, you are not holding them back. You stop that. You stop that right now. You stop that right now, otherwise I will give you a hug. You hear me? Huh. You and me might be in the same boat. I really admire Millie's passion, but I get tired just thinking about keeping pace with her sometimes. Yeah, they, they both have a lot of energy. Oh, you played First Snow after Twofold, and it was very interesting knowing the characters' futures and stuff. Oh, I love that. See, I, I purposely went into it knowing I wanted to play First Snow first. And I'm I'm so glad I did because it gives me like such a perspective of what's happening next. But I can imagine how interesting it must be doing it the other way around as well. There it is again. It's only slight, but that tug at the corner of her mouth shows she's feeling the same thing I am. A slight sense of camaraderie in our shared situation, dealing with two impossible people. With that, Haley picks herself up off the couch and takes a long stretch. Thanks for letting me come over. I'd better let you get to work. Sure. You gonna be okay getting back? Yeah, the walk could be worse. I could do with the exercise anyway. Probably a good opportunity to clear her head at least. Oh, thank you for the poster check too. I Big stretch. Big stretch. Uh, let's go for a walk. <laughs> That's not what I meant. It'll be fine. I just needed a break. Very understandable. I'm I'm so glad she got this little break at least. Probably helped to talk about it. Even like not resolving anything, just saying things out loud can really help sometimes. And thank you for the hydrate too, Dima. I will have some of my monster. 
got a peachy keen today. I was feeling peachy. And it's still just as nice as the first time I tried it. As she walks over to make her leave, leaving a post-it note on my window, Haley stops and looks back from the half-open door. Oh, an olive. Yeah? Thanks again for coming over the other day. No problem. Hopefully we can get Caprice around next time. Uh, mm. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. I, 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 oh, I... I oh. Got you. Hopefully. Yeah, catch you. She strides out the door and shuts it behind her. With my guest gone and work imminent, I sink further... <laughs> I'm sorry. I need to move the post-it. It's distracting me. <laughs> Put that back on my head. There we go. <laughs> I've got to say, I love having the ability to just drop things anywhere on my screen. Like this little post-it. I could put it anywhere. I could put it on my logo. Put it over the axolotl. Hang in there. Put it on chat. Hang in there. Put it wherever I want. I love that freedom. But yeah, venting is an important aspect. Yeah, yeah, I've got things on the, the whole screen. I have the full freedom. <laughs> With my guest gone and work imminent, I sink further into the couch cushions for lack of anything else to do. And oh, random guy, thank you for stopping in. I hope you have a, a good rest of your day. Bye-bye, take care. I have to depart soon as well. It is, oh, it's already six. Oh, this is a one week later. This is actually a really good stopping point. Let's leave it here for now. Let's leave it like this. And give it a save here, ready for next week. Because it's right at like the start of a scene now. That's a good a good starting point. Yeah, also thank you for following too. Thank you for dropping a follow. Yes, you can head back me now. <laughs> but yeah, that seems like a good good point to end it at for now. We're making progress! We're getting there. We're getting there. Did we ever try the other options with the muffins? We're going to. I'm gonna wait until I've done the game. Like, when I've done all of Millie's route, then we'll be doing the other options within that route. And then we'll do the art club, and then I'm guessing there's going to be something similar with the art club too. So we'll do one playthrough of that, and then go back and do the other options. So that way we'll get all of the content, but I'm not going to go back mid-story. Because it seems like the, the Darren stuff is continuing. So I don't think it's just like a one and done situation. I think it's going to be, we're going to get Darren's story as the story progresses. And it'll be like that, like between other scenes. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining me. I, I'm always having so, such a blast playing this. I love this game so much. But yes, uh, we'll give more pats next stream. Uh, when do my streams start? Uh, I always post a schedule on my Twitter page and also in my Discord server, where the, the links are like somewhere down, down there. But also when I'm not live as well, if you go onto like the chat view on my stream when I'm not live, my schedule's posted there as well. And I try to update like the Twitch schedule too, but sometimes I forget with that, so that sometimes works. But uh, thank you for the confetti. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for the two folds. Now I have to wait for the confetti before I... Was that it? I think... I think we're safe. Quick. Let me... Ugh, quick. Wait, it didn't change. What's happening? My screen is not changing. Hold on. There we go. Let me do that manually. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining me today. I need to double check that. I think some things have gotten unlinked along the way. But yeah, I'm I'm so I'm so happy to be playing this game. It's so good. It's so fun. Eight. Eight. But yes, thank you so much everyone for joining. Thank you everyone for being here, for for lurking, for chatting, for joining me, for uh putting up with me as I ramble on about unrelated things for 20 minutes. <laughs> Good times. Good times all around. But yes, thank you so much, everyone. 
Yeah, I've got my, my Addy Shikishi on the wall. It's it's so pretty. I love it. Uh, will I oh will I be adding the Pro Chan? I, I I need to add VP Chan to the shelf. I must. I guess you are right. I'll put her next to Mimo. <laughs> I must do. I, I I need to add a lot of stuff to my shelves. I think I might need to maybe buy a third shelf. Because I've already got so many things on there. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I always have so much fun with this. I really love the visual novel streams because it really is like we're playing the game, but it's also really nice just talking about topics as well. And they always bring so bring up so many interesting topics to discuss. And I, I love that. But yes, for now, yes, I, I may have to splash out and buy three shelves. Can I afford three shelves? We'll see. <laughs> but yes, I've got to go and go and get some dinner now for me because it is past six and I'm getting a bit hungry. But this has been really nice. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. I got my little post-it now as well. Put it on the... Oh no, it's like attached to me still. That's weird. There we go, it's on the post-it now. I'm covering up the, the Verpro logo, hold on. That's still attached to me, hold on. There we go. I still go behind it, but that's okay. Let's, let's just put it like that for now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited for next week as well. I can't wait to explore more. But yes, I will be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm, my plan for tomorrow is I'm going to finish Oros because I only have one area left in that game, but it's really difficult puzzles. So it might take me a while, but I don't have any set plans for after Oros. I have a few ideas of things I could do, but I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow yet. So, <laughs> so that'll be fun. Um, please look forward to it, whatever ends up happening. Maybe I'll end up writing. Maybe it'll become a writing stream. I will write my story for Millie. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's been really fun though. Yeah, I have a huge hitbox somehow. I'm, I just have like a psychic aura around me that draws in post-it notes. But yeah, let's find somebody to send a raid over to so I can go and get some food. Who is on at the moment? Ooh. Selfie's on. Selfies on how many times have I raided Sylphie recently? I'm, I'm, I am but a predictable little cat. It feels especially right with like Ofkai week as well though to, to raid the other Verpros. <laughs> but I'm gonna send the raid over to Sylphie. Sylphie's doing some art at the moment, doing an art stream. <gasps> this is so cute. This is so cute. Okay, I think they're rigging at the moment. They're doing some live 2D rigging. Uh, rigging. I'm gonna send you over to Sylphie, the circus pigeon VTuber, who is also a member of Verpro with me. Who's the the one eating takoyaki in our merch set. <laughs> All right, here is the raid message. If you're subbed, we have comfy. If you're not subbed, we shall send hearts. And I'm gonna send you over Sylphie's way. get the raid set up and I can go and have some dinner <laughs> but it's been really nice it's been a it's been a very fun stream today I'm, I'm so excited for next week there's there's still so much happening that I'm, I'm doing it so slowly it's 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 probably gonna take a while for me to resolve many issues but <laughs> but I'm I, I'm excited I can't wait but yes for now I will leave you in Sylphie's Hands? Wings? I'll leave you in their wings. <laughs> no, they do have hands as well. That's how they do art. But uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time. <laughs>